Hello, good evening and welcome ladies and gentlemen to another round of the Next Gen Racing Touring Car Championship Season 6 as brought to you on the Premier Sim Racing platform available only on PC known as iRacing and powered by IMB Racewear. That's right ladies and gentlemen, we are back tonight for another round of intense racing action in the Premier Touring Car Racing Class Championship here and well what a venue we have got in store for our second round of the season. Round 2 of 10 takes place at the one and only Italian Temple of Speed that is the Monza Grand Prix circuit, or nine in full as the Auto German National Monza. And our drivers are going to be taking on the circuit today, minus its first chicane. So, as a result, the intense top speeds that will be achieved on the start for this straight are only going to be higher. And this circuit for the uninitiated is a circuit that harks back to the olden days of motorsport, arguably one of the oldest circuits in the world. Indeed, as I understand it, the third oldest purpose built race course on the European mainland, if not in the world. And it is a circuit which is all about top speed, acceleration and being hard and fast and heavy on the brakes. To do well here, you've got to be able to manage that speed, but also be reliant on the draft of the drivers around you and be ready to go as late as possible into those heavy braking zones, of which we do have many around here. And also be able to get the car very quickly turned through the chicanes, of which there are two on this circuit. And if you get that all together, you may just be leading come that final checker flag. Or in qualifying, you may find yourself on pole in what is going to be a hotly contested set of races. Speaking of which, as we walk you all to this live broadcast of the circuit side, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. We are live for the remainder of the season. We do apologise about it being a post-round broadcast last week. It was so great to see so many of you enjoying the race in action from Silverstone. We are live at Circuit Side today in Italy. And our schedule for tonight is as follows. Times in Greenwich Mean Time, that's GMT, or Universal Corne Time, UTC. And as we can see, in just under 18 minutes' time, we make it away into our qualifying session. 15 minutes in duration, all the drives out of circuit. It's going to get crowded, and indeed, it's going to all be about the tow. After which, we make it away to our grid for our first race of day. All three of our Race has been sprint races, of course, all 12 laps in duration today, or approximately 20 minutes without a safety car. And our first race will be getting underway at quarter past eight. Our tap will be taking a brief breather before returning at just before nine o'clock this evening for the build up to race number two. And then we'll be taking another brief breather, but not without our reverse grid draw. And we'll be returning just before quarter to nine this evening. In fact, quarter to ten this evening. Let's get it right. And that will be up for what will be at race number three to wrap up the night. Now, this broadcast is being brought to you live on three media platforms for your viewing pleasure. Firstly, you could be tuned in by one of the two Next Gen Racing media platforms, those being on YouTube, at youtube.com, search for Next Gen Racing. And welcome to you guys and girls tuning in via Next Gen. Alternatively, you could be tuning in via what is on Facebook, and that's at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Next Gen Racing. And welcome to you guys and girls tuning in via Facebook. And well, I can definitely tell you one thing. There's plenty of you tuning on YouTube at the moment. We say hello to you guys and girls on YouTube in particular, including Ragnarok Cookie. Also, we say hello to Phil McDougal there, a classic driver from CXR Project Black, who has moved to the more official account, which is CXR Racing, and also to Verado Motorsport. I'm very happy to see all of you tuning in. Popcorn bucket out there for Phil, and we'll definitely get your popcorn if you haven't already. And we also do have the unofficial broadcast available on Twitch, and that's at twitch.tv for slash TX141. And well, who is TX141? I hear you ask as we welcome you guys and girls tuning in via Twitch. Well, Allow me to introduce myself. I'm your host and commentator for this season. My name is Paul Walsh, also known as TX141 or Britain a Spit, depending on what media you follow me on. Now we bring you all your racing action tonight, indeed, over the entirety of the season. And well, let's talk a little bit about that season schedule. For as we can see, we are now into round number two. Last time out, it was our one and only visit to the United Kingdom for this season. It seems strange that we're only making one visit, but it's to Silverstone National on the 12th of March 2024. And today we're here on the 19th of March for the Autodrome National Monza, and was the first of two visits to Italy. In round number three in a week's time we're making our way down under to Australia for a fan favourite, the Sandown International Motor Raceway Circuit. Normally synonymous with V8 supercars in Australia but it absolutely roars to the doors with racing when it comes to touring car racing action. Now we're making our way back to European content for the Spanish circuit and Motorland Aragon, specifically the touring car racing layout on the 2nd of April. And then to wrap up the first half of the season we make our way to the United States of America particularly the state of California for the one and only Long Beach Street Racing Circuit. And on the 9th of April there we'll get to see a cult classic racing circuit come alive as our drives roll their way past the local fountain and down the beach and then we'll be making our way into our mid-season break week. Now will be a single week and we'll return for the second half of the season which commences on the 23rd of April and that'll be in the United States as well, albeit at the Watkins Glen International Circuit and where it's heavily
probably can for corners and arguably the mecca of road racing, the revival place of road racing in the United States after the Second World War. And you'll get to see exactly why it holds that reputation as our drives roar their way around the state of New York before they make their way back to European mainland for what is our second and final visit to Italy. Now being round at number seven, first time on the calendar, the Auto Drama International Del Mugello and the Mugello Circuit will be playing host our drives on the 30th of April, recently introduced to iRacing of course, but will then make our way to Germany for the Hockenheimring Baden-Württemberg Grand Prix Circuit. That'll be on the 7th of May, and after we make away from the Tilka Design Circuit, it'll be our top and ultimate round back down under in Australia at the revival of the Oran Park Raceway, decommissioned of course in early 2010. But we're bringing it back from the grave on the 14th of May, and we bring everything to a close at the one and only Daytona International Speedway in the US state of Florida. And while drivers will be taken on its road course on the 21st of May, and it'll just be as much about the oval banking as it will be about the infield hairpins. So we've got a long journey ahead of us. Absolutely fantastic venues as well. And well, speaking of fantastic venues, we've got an absolutely cracking one coming up today. But more on that in due course, because we need to give you a recap of the championship standings. So after one round, we begin with the Drivers' Championships. And of course, we have three of them. Begin with the overall championship, most closely contested by our pros, of course, as they don't compete in their own class, but all the drivers are eligible for this championship. And as we can see, Wojciech Swiridoric leads by 13 points over Adam Delmon after what has been the first round of racing. Swiridoric was looking very comfortable, it must be said, in the Audi RS3 LMS, and it would have been a larger points haul for him if it hadn't gone all wrong towards the end of race number three, many would have predicted. However, Swiridoric leads over Adam Delmon, whose consistency is been key and puts him on parity with Jamie Dory, who sits in P3 based on result countback. From your top three, it's a point to Luciano Vitford, and then we do have after them what will be Wayne Douglas who completes your top five, and will Douglas being calm, cool and consistent and getting stuck into the fighting, as was, um, what was Mikey Doble there in P6, albeit an unfortunate disconnect for all of the Doble Sim Racing family in what was at the final race of the day, saw them drop some major points and it was a big what if question, could that come back to haunt them later on in the season? Well from then we come to where's the lead prime driver in P7 of Daniel Downing on 89 points. More on his story in a brief moment. He was the dominant former in the prime class to a degree, with Benjamin McCluskey at P8 only a point behind. And it's Shane Piggott, your second place prime driver, a further point behind, and Gavin Garner completing your top 10. From then, we do have Svavomir Jarvoski, who's P11 at best arrest, the best part of 17 points here of Isaac Doble, with Adam McNally, Matthew Sheraton, and Alex Meredith completing your top 15. And we have Russell Fowler outside the top 15 by two points, but ahead of Lee Horn based on result countback. Matt Kremsen at Ben Altria and Matthew Addy round off your top 20. Outside the top 20 overall, it's Joseph Doe who leads the way ahead of Nick Clemens, only by result count back, with Ian Manners a further what is nine points behind, and then Sam Smith and Kieran Sharp complete your top 25. With Sam Van P26, the goal win motorsports try home some misfortune at Silverstone, and looking for that to go away today, as will Luke Jones, Harley Bicknell, John Higgins Jr. and Patrick Falconer, will be the exception in that regard is Harley Bicknell, more on his story when we come to the AM Championship standings, as he really was the standout performer in the AM class. From the top 30 in P31, it's Stuart Wyness, who sits on with 21 points, free clear of Mark Kent. And then Marcel Fritsch, on what was a difficult debut in his first routing in the NXTCC, he sits P33. Keep your eyes out for him, he's looking strong for today, ahead of what's Kieran Smart and Mark Redford. And then do have where's Gabriel Yumaz, P36, ahead of Reece Watt, with Jack Bolton, Jack Jeffries, and Daniel Fritz completing your top 40. And then outside the top 40, let's not forget about them because we have 60 drivers this season. We have Duncan Rice, P41, ahead of Craig Tillerson, with Mark Sykes, P43, ahead of Piotr Jagoslewski. And Jagoslewski having perhaps the most misfortune in the prime class as of the Silverstone round. And he had a lot of pace in the car, but it wasn't to be. And it was the same for Alan McCain, who in the end found himself suffering at the advice and virtues of incidents that were not necessarily his fault. Really Shannon having a good debut in P46 on three points, one ahead of both with Darren Hills and Jonathan Collins and Tom Anderson. And then we can see Kevin Smith completing your top 50. And yet score any points, Andrew Holmes, and Christopher Racines. Also, where's their Costa Chats Continental? Jeff Banks, Marcello Reles. Also, Mitchell West, I do believe there, that's also being Reese Edwards, Roy Plummer, Milmos Blau, and Andrew Pike completing your top 30. But now, not top 30, top 60, I should say. But now, coming on to our Prime Championship, and here we have the scores adjusted specifically for the Prime Fisher positions last time out, and it's Daniel Downing who leads by the best part of what is 22 points ahead of Slavomir Drawowski. Daniel Downing, really the man to beat at Silverstone, albeit it was in race number two where things didn't quite go his way, and we definitely saw some standout performances from other drivers in the field, and that's why we're not calling him an early favourite just yet, in the fact that he definitely was kept in check. Javoski was closer after the race in at Silverstone, but some post-round 
penalties have reeled him back down to P2 on 136 points. A clear to Shane Piggott. And then we do have Adam McNally and Ben Altria completing your top five. Alex Merniff, he'll feel as though he should be inside that top five after what was the race win taken away from him in a bit of a argy-bargy with Slavomir Drovoski at the end of the race in at Silverstone. But still, he's going to embrace that energy and look ahead, as will Russell Fowler, who didn't quite get the chance to shine at Silverstone, and neither did Matthew Sheverton. Both of them 99 points there and 10 clear of Akram Zone. Matthew Addy completing your top 10. Ian Manners, P11 on 74 points, one clear of Sam Smith, with further points to John Higgins Jr. and Nick Clemens. And it's Luke Jones who completes your top 15, with Sam Vinol's P16, head of Reese Watt, Mark Redford, Marcel Fritsch, and Piotr Jagoslewski. We then have outside the top 20 of the pro ams to wrap them up Alan McCain, Duncan Rise, and Tom Anderson. And then yet to score any points as they're yet to compete in a round. We have Andrew Holmes, Christi Christian Racines, also there, Jeff Banks, and Mitchell West. But then let's come to our new Drivers' Championship for this season, of course, the AM Drivers' Championship. And here we can see it's Harley Bicknell, who leads by 36 points. It was a debut for the class, and indeed a debut for him at the front of the field. And no doubt about it, he was the man to beat, taking two wins in the class. Mark Sykes, me, a very consistent set of performances, have put in P2, the best part of 36 behind. But instead, 12 ahead of Daniel Fritz, with the Australian driver, wasn't feeling down under. If anything, he was feeling upwards, as the progress through the field was noticeable as the racing went on. Gabriel Yumez, a further two points behind ahead of Craig Tillerson and that was your top five one point clear of Jonathan Collins in P6. Daniel sits P7 ahead of Riley Sheringham who had some great batting last time out no doubt about it in the Honda Civic Type R with then Kevin Smith and Mark Kent completing your top 10 and Costa Chats continent to was there Reese Edwards, Roy Plummer and Vilmos Blau yet to compete in a round and therefore yet to score any points. But then we come to our team's championship and here we can see the complexion, our top 10. Next Gen Ping have started off where they left off last season with leading ways on 248 points, head of Semper Racing on 184. Meanwhile behind it's ever close for SRL Next Gen Gold P3 ahead of Double Sim Racing with EV Fusion in the World of Racing at sitting at P5 on 119 points. Next Gen sit P6 meanwhile the sister team of Next Gen Ping and they've only got two points over Gold in motorsport with ace of spades racing jw motorsport and full tilt v motorsport completing the top 10 from the 51 of full tilt v motorsport it's to the 50 of irace esports as their rivalry reignites from season five performance link esports me i'll sit a further five behind to a clear of aztec racing with the sim racing collective and track scotland completing a top 15 and then we have grant ws motorsport racing p60 on 18 points 10 clear of banks redford west racing and then we can see at red grove projects whiskey runners racing and the organization and c racing completing a top 20 and outside the top 20 let's not forget about them on zero points it's also verano motorsport and virtual reality autosports and those are your championship standings after one round of racing but now we come to our venue for today as we continue the story and we are heading to the town of Monza in the Lombardy region of Italy for the one and only Autodrome National Monza, the Grand Prix circuit, albeit without the first chicane. So as our drivers roar around the, this circuit today, as we can see from the circuit map provided us by iRacing.com, thank you to iRacing for their brilliant simulator and the track maps that come with it. This circuit is going to see our drivers reach the highest top speeds we will see all season as they roar their way on through the opening corner of Turn and One at Curva Pizzano, also known as Curva Grande, and charge away into to the first heavy braking zone and that being at the Seconda Chicane. Albeit also known as the Regia Chicane, depending on your preference, and going through the Nomen Control drives will be bouncing away between the apex curves of turns two and three as they come barreling down to the region of 60 miles an hour before they put themselves back into full throttle and charge into Lesmos. Lesmo 1 at turn number four will be an open right-hander with a little bit of camber towards the apex and meanwhile the second Lesmo at turn at number five will continue that theme orbit of a very sharp apex curve which our drivers will be keen to avoid. Have a get it right, they'll make their way down the Seraglio back straight or the Curva del Cerro due to the bend in the straight and as they roar the way towards the second and final set of chicanes it will be the Variante Ascari or the Ascari chicane that will take our drives through turn six seven and eight it'll be a quick fire left right left and as they make the way out of turn number eight they'll look to be flat out in the run all the way down towards Parabolica curve at turn number nine they're hard and fast on the brakes in the sweeping late apex right hander to make the way out of the corner and complete lap before doing it all over again and if anybody can find a two second gap from the rolls they may just be able to run away to victory but we get the feeling this is going to feel like touring car meets NASCAR meets Monza. But let's come to our rules for today. We can't go racing without them, of course. And setup-wise, remember this is a fixed setup series with all setups provided ahead of each and every round of racing. Driver class-wise, drivers have been assigned to one of three classes, that's Pro, Prime, and Am for this season. And driver classes have been kept the same today, as far as I'm aware, but they will be finalised as the conclusion of round three, so we may see some adjustments after next week's round of racing. Now, sprint race-wise, the race one grid shall be set based on the results of qualifying. That's a given. Meanwhile, the race two grid shall be set based on results of race number one. So what I mean 
means it's whoever wins race one, they start on pole for race number two, and we work our way down the order to set the grid for race number two accordingly. And the race three grid shall be a reverse grid. It's a partial reverse grid, however, based on the results of race number two, with the reversal position being drawn live from the Con 2 booth, and that will be between P13 and P23. For the uninitiated, of course, we do cut to the Con 2 booth. We whip out the next-gen racing lottery bowl and draw two lottery balls up from the bowl, add the numbers together, and that will be our reverse grid position for the final race of the day. And in all of the races, each race shall have one fast repair available in each race. And each race shall conclude of either the allotted lap amount or 30 minutes, whichever expires first. We are expecting the 12 laps of racing in each race to be about 21 minutes of racing. However, we see multiple safety cars. We could push the 30-minute mark, although we've yet to do that historically. Coming on to race stewarding, an independent race director is watching all the races for what will be track limit infringements and deployment of the safety car. And penalties for track limit infringements are as follows. The first and second warnings, they're just a slap on the wrist. There's no penalty. The third one, it's a five-second second post-race time penalty. It's double to 10 on the fourth warning, and on the fifth warning, you've earned yourself a drive-through penalty. And those drive-through penalties must be served within three laps. And racing incidents, meanwhile, should be reviewed at post-round. And as we can see, Success Fast has made its return for this season, and it will be applied on a race-by-race -race basis overall and in the Prime and Am classes. And for qualifying of race number one, the championship stains, which we've just taken you through, shall be how we apply the Success Fast. And for race two, we update it based on the official positions of race one, and we do the same for race number three based on the official positions of race number two and to give you a reminder of the success ballast table there it is and as you can see the positions on the left hand side and then we go overall at prime and am and the key point here being of course that if our primes or ams find themselves in a position whereby they finished overall inside the top 10 and they could be picking up more success ballast for the overall finishing position alternatively for their class finishing position they will always take the greater success ballast and that way nobody can game the success ballast system but indeed it's punishing if you're the leader of either the classes alternatively overall all the way up to 56 Point one kilograms if you're the overall championship leader and well I can see the void checks for a diet will be you knowing about that way very soon well, that's enough rules and regulation everything in between we're all here for the racing and well without further ado we do head circuit side ladies and gentlemen and we look to the man who we just mentioned the name the overall championship leader from Semper Racing void checks for a diet and here today in the Audi RS3 as always with a very colorful orange white and black livery and well I can tell you one thing ladies and gentlemen he has been setting timing screens alight in the practice over the course of the build-up to today and the fact despite the fact he's carrying 56.1 kilograms of success ballast in the car he's still regularly putting himself right up there and as we've also previously seen in what season five it's almost if it only seems to serve to make him go faster when he does have the maximum success ballast in the car and therefore we're looking forward to seeing what the punishment in the number 80 can do today but of course he follows that Mikey Doble there in towards the Regia chicane the two of them together and indeed the two championship rivals from season five they continue their story will the three time drivers champion here from Doble Sim Racing he'll be looking to defend that number one status and after what was a difficult end to his day at Silverstone he'll be hoping for plenty more today but can he make it happen that will be the big question that will be on his mind but as he gets himself set and all ready to go we do see a couple more of you in the respective chats who we do say hello to including K-Teams in the Facebook chat who's cheering on, cheering on Kevin Smith who's racing of course for Rano Motorsport in the AM class we'll look out for Smith a little bit later on today and we also do say hello to Lord Blaine there in the Twitch chat. And I hope you're doing well, Mr. Blaine. And I do remember you, Emil, and all those days back from the ACC League, the Assessor Course of Competition League held by Next Gen at Racing. And very happy to have you tuning in. I hope you've been keeping well. It's always as if it was yesterday when I saw you racing out in the Aston Martin V8 Vantage GT3, if my memory serves me correctly. But we also see Verona Motorsport there in the YouTube chat saying track is boiling, could cook an egg on it. And if we take a look at those at track temperatures and give us a brief moment, ladies and gentlemen, to bring those up on your screen on the right hand side and goodness me 44 degrees centigrade is the track temperature 23 degrees centigrade ambient well that is a piping hot circuit and for those wondering what does that exactly mean when it comes to the racing well, the higher the track temperature, normally the slower the lap times. But on top of that, more importantly, and this is the key factor, it means the tyre degradation rate can go higher very quickly. And, well, that affects all the machines out here. And the least affected only are the Honda Civic tyre pass, the FK8 generation machines, one of which being piloted by Kieran Sharp for the Sim Racing Collective. And that very charming livery, I must say, the Sim Racing Collective really pulling out all the stops livery-wise. And, well, if liveries could kill in terms of looks, this would be perhaps the one on the grid. As he parks the car up there, I think to give us a bit of a demonstration, alternative practice. 
as he's parking up to do a practice launch start. But as he brings the car to a stop, it's neither. In fact, he makes his way to the pit lane. Meanwhile, the car that suffers the most, arguably, with high track temperatures is the Hyundai Elantra N. As we see here, Jack Jeffries from Red Grove Projects piloting it. And as he makes his way on through at the first of two Lesbos, he'll feel like the tyre degradation will really start to bite in in the final third of the race as he brings the car to a halt. And we're not too far away from going green flag into qualifying. But as we do the back, look back to Wojciech's where actually Audi and also the Hyundai Veloster don't seem to be as perturbed by those high track temperatures, albeit not quite in the class of what would be the Honda Civic Type R, but indeed up there in the middle ground. And speaking of a Veloster driver, here is one, Shane Pigger for Ace of Spades Racing as he makes his way through Lesmo number two. And we does have the company of the 96 there from JW Motorsport, or what is none other than Patrick Falconer. And well, we look forward to seeing how the Audi driver gets on today as he makes his way on down. But as he heads in towards the Ascari chicane very shortly we're getting ready we are only 10 seconds away from transitioning in two qualifying ladies and gentlemen and well we're grand total with 49 drivers at attendance I can tell you that track space is going to be limited and with that everyone's going to be gasping for the toe but who is going to be the stalls of slipstream who is going to be the master of the madness that awaits us let's find out as our drivers make the way on to the circuit then to kick off their qualifying session second time of the season of course well we do look our drivers immediately making the way out of the pit lane everyone furiously getting underway albeit Gavin Garner I think waiting to leave the pit lane and I wouldn't be surprised here if some teams are asking their drivers to hold back and get out of the pit lane together a little bit later well, as everyone makes the way out it's going to be the best part of 50 touring car machines making them out of the pit lane you can already see the traffic jam falling at the end there underneath the camera well meanwhile as we see Alex Meredith already bobbing and weaving side to side down the start finish straight in towards Curva Grande what can we expect in qualifying well we've already in a way given you a bit of a synopsis in the fact that Slipstream is going to be king around here you're going to need a toe if you want to take pole position in your class alternatively overall or at least put yourself well up the order and after we saw the top 30 at Silverstone National separated by under what was six tenths of a second we reckon it could be just as close here today as our drivers get set to position themselves on the grid and indeed this is one of those rounds whereby anybody can end up anywhere indeed some of you may remember back in what was season four when we raced here and when we did have bt motorsport battling and we have double sim racing we got to see a good number of prime drivers qualify right at the front of the field including none other when he was in the prime class isaac double will be missing out on the championship in season four but taking it in season five he's now pro as a result but as we do look to darren Ills, albeit hidden right now by the tree line there he is making his way on down to the break zone in at the ace of spades hyundai veloster well right now all the drivers will know you've just got to pick the right time to put that qualifying lap together and if you do so and also you have a good run through the chicanes you may just be able to surprise everyone now it's not just about slipstream around here although that's a pivotal part so being very strong on the rotational aspects of your car is important and what do we mean by that in layman's terms well given the fact we've got a wide variety of low speed corners around here trying to get that nose pointed out of the corner and get back up to the throttle full throttle as soon as possible whilst managing the understeer that's inherent in these front engine front wheel drive cars that is very key because the sooner you can get to full throttle you may be getting one to two miles now more than your rivals down the end of the given straight you're making your way onto and that is worth a couple of attempts of time in itself but as our drivers all make the way down what will be towards the final corner here and as we can see into parabolic curve everyone queuing up well i think the queue is now going to gradually get out of the way here as all drives begin to roll the way through you can see double sim racing there led by mikey doble with isaac doble just behind and then joseph doble following on through as they make the way up towards the timeline all going on to their first flying lap and with the qualifying laps around here expected to be in the region of what will be around the two minute mark qualifying time is at a premium our drives do not have that many laps to get it together and well in terms of how many laps you can expect here I think the majority of drivers will have gone out with quite a sizable tank of fuel and they will be staying out there and the question of whether the tyres are going to last long enough in order to get those times in as they draw the way in towards turn number one and as they do so and we can see it that rise there in YouTube saying I have load shedding so may miss the qualifying that's very unfortunate Duncan but we'll look forward to seeing you on the grid when you are able to make it and we'll do hope to see you at some point today we do love to see the Goldwyn Motorsports team giving it everything and we know you guys get girls absolutely always do but as we do look to what is Gabriel Yilmaz in a bit of a pack of his own here and well making his way in towards the 
second Lesmo. We do have some new drives on the grid today as we do look to the helicopter camera that is going to follow Yilmaz on through the corner and now down to the circuit side. And our new driver on the grid today is none other than James Matisgal, the Aztec racing theme here as he makes his way on around what is turn number four and in towards turn number five. We also have some drivers who won on the grid last week also here in the tents today, including what is Mitchell West as we do say hello to him here in at the number 101 and perhaps it's going to be his day to give us a 101 on how to compete in the Brown class in the Hyundai Elantra. You never know, of course, when you join in the season at the start where you get established quite early on. It'll be a bit late on the brakes there for what is Mitchell West and interrupts our train of four and take it to the gravel. And I think I'm to snatch the brakes and pull the car to the right a bit too close to the Ace of Spades racing machine just in front. But he's going to ease himself back onto the circuit very gradually as our first lap times begin to come on in. And well, as they do, we do have Andrew Pike here running quite close to the back of what will be at the Aztec racing machine. I do believe the number 26 of oh, that Matthew Shepherd. No, that's not Matthew Shepherdson. Shepherdson's a bit further up the road. The 26 there being what is the car? Excuse me. Oh, we're just trying to decide. I think that's Gabriel Yilmaz in front. And, well, a little bit of an altercation kicking off here between these two, I think. And, yes, you can see the flash of lights there for Pike. He's not too happy about the fact that the Aztec Racing driver seems to be standing in the way and interrupting the flow of the Sim Racing Collective cars. But then again, of course, qualifying's a little bit different in the fact that it's the lead driver who normally has the authority to track position. And if you find yourself behind, you may have mispositioned yourself, and that will be the full process. You can see immediately there Pike backing off, but now backing off off the train of cars, and that is going to be painful that puts him away from his teammate and it puts him out of momentum it costs him a whole lap plus probably an extra 30 to 45 seconds so right now he's lost a lap of qualifying he may have lost two as a result of it but as Reece Watt makes his way through the first of two Lesbos making his way on around and in towards what will be a turn at number five and I can see Lord Blaine there in at the Twitch chat referring to a manoeuvre that he did make here in the GT3 league hosted by Next Gen on set of course of competition being at what was the Moses manoeuvre and we've seen already a few Moses manoeuvres this season at Silverstone, could we see more of them say Perhaps he's in a reverse Moses manoeuvre, which I do know our race director absolutely loves to see those as well. We'll have to wait and see as we've got 10 minutes of qualifying to go, and we'll very shortly we are going to be getting an onboard lap with one of our drivers, and you can see from the circuit map in the top right corner of your screen just how everybody is absolutely focused on running nose to tail around here, knowing how important that toe is, and well, as we look to at Luciano a bit foot here, well, he's going to roar his way on through, and we jump on board with the Hyundai Veloster driver for a flying lap of the Monza circuit. As he makes his way down the start finish straight, heading all the way up to the highest possible RPM. We've got upshift in there to get the maximum possible engine power on the next gear. And we're already into sixth gear. Top gear heading upwards now 145 miles an hour and heading in towards Curva Grande. No first chicane here. We've only got the second as he makes his way into the opening right hand, just burying the throttle down and turning as gently as possible here, making sure they're turning enough to offset the understeer. And you can see the car bleeding off speed with the rotation, but now pointing it straight once again, bringing it over to the right and hard on the brakes at 150 meters of corner apex, using the marshals post on the right hand side. And as he transfers between at the apex of the Rogier chicane, the second gear, now onwards towards the first of the two Lesmos. Now to medium speed apex is up to fourth gear before breaking approximately what is 40 meters of corner apex going for a late apex down to third gear as he exits out using the runoff area to his advantage as he now makes his way into Lesmo 2. Here on the brakes of the 50 meters board down to third gear takes a little bit of apex curve but not too high in order to offset the car and force it wide and as he makes his way down the Seraglio straight now heading upwards here what will be 130 miles an hour as he gets ready for the next braking zone. When he reaches fifth gear he'll likely will do so as he goes into the toe driver in front backing off and Bitford now onto the brakes very shortly and what will be approximately 100 meters of corner apex all the way down to third gear cutting as much to the left hander now through the right hand for a scoring and back to the left here as he straightens out the exit and as he does so lets the car run as wide as possible and goodness me that's an off track there and Bitford having to back off at nine that's going to be invalidated lap and he's going to try and get himself off the race and as he's got more cars coming on pro but not quite a successful lap that he would have liked and we'll now have to do it all again very shortly we've got most of the onboard lap there as he backs off and brings it in behind what will be the Goldwing Motorsports car well, right now the number 60 driver here needing a bit more in qualifying in fact he's B4 currently but two temps off a pole and that's currently held up overall by Isaac Doble also your leading pro driver meanwhile your leading prime with IRAC Esports Alan McCain who's ahead of Stuart Wyness and well these drivers right now very close in terms of those lap times albeit Ben Altria says hold on a second and meanwhile Akram Zanoon absolutely shatters the sky with a piercing 51.625 and that's three tenths faster than what anybody else 
Carlos has been able to achieve. I wouldn't be surprised if all the fuel's almost out of that Audi. And on top of that as well, he's picked up a mammoth tow around the lap. But to be fair, that's exactly what you need to do. And now everybody's going to be thinking, how do I achieve that lap? Who do I work with to be able to make it happen? As he makes his way through turn at number one in towards two, three. Could we see a Pro-Am on pole? It's been a long time since we've seen that happen. The last time we had a Pro-Am on the front row out of a qualifying session was Matthew Addy last season at Snetterton, many of you remember. He did go on to finish as your winner in that race in the Pro-Am class, but missed out on the overall podium, if my memory serves me correctly. We'll have to wait and see what happens here. But could we see Akram Zanoon make history and take what would be the first ever Pro-Am pole position in a qualifying session in the NXTC? We haven't had it happen in five seasons races so far. We've had Pro-Am overall race winners in the reverse grid races, but we've never seen a Pro-Am pole sitter as he makes his way on it down the back straight. But as he does so, let's talk a little bit about the AM class as well. His track Scotland's Kieran Smart, who right now making his way on down there with his teammate behind him as well. And I do believe as he makes his way into the braking zone here, he's going to be feeling quite confident. It's all coming together right now for the Hyundai Elantra D. The team having a strong qualifying session so far. We have always Stuart Wine is just behind him there, as you can see in the orange machine, with them both having the base blue and white colours of the Scottish flag. But then it will be the orange for Wine, green for what is Smart. And right now, it's definitely looking as though it's coming up all good for the team as they make the way in towards a parabolic curve as he does in the number 61 at Orionis right now knowing there's a bit more time out there and we'll give the fact your top 19 separated by nine and a half times with Jack Bowles in P20 just over one second off a pole well, speaking of the man let's take a little look at him in the Honda Civic Type R and well some of you may be wondering at this point don't we normally consider the Honda Civic Type R to be a bit of a slow car on the long straight yes it is on paper it's arguably the weakest car for this circuit given the fact that it does lack the top speed and also it lacks the acceleration beyond fourth gear but the one thing this Honda has over its rails is braking potential and tyre wear in its favour. And that's going to play a huge part when we see our Honda drives go battling into these heavy braking zones where they will be able to brake the best part of what will be about five to 10 metres later than anybody else out there in equal machinery. And we'll right now, Bolton making his way on down and in the tow there of what will be one of the Hondas in front of him, one of the next gen racing pink Hondas, I do believe. And also a little bit further up the road, we do have one of the full-tilt be most for Audis. And we'll right now, the Honda driver, I think just trying to gain as much as he can here in the double draft with only four minutes of qualifying left to go and what he does and so and meanwhile we can tell you that Mark Kent's moved close to smart in the battle for Ampo as P13, P14 between the two of them meanwhile elsewhere Gavin Garner's leapt his way up to P6 on a 52.104 leaving it quite late in the day following Benjamin McCluskey on the round and meanwhile look out my Conte booth window we have Kevin Smith coming to line. In fact, here is the Verano Motorsport driver. And I do know that a good number of you are cheering him on today as he makes one down. Currently the lowest place driver in at this qualifying session, looking for a bit more time out there. He's three tenths of a ride plumber at the moment. But then again, I get the feeling that Smith may be hedging his bets on the fact he wants the qualifying clear air. And some drivers have a preference for that. They're not the biggest fans of qualifying in the tow, given the risks that it has if you get a bit too close to the drivers in front of you. And I think Smith right now might be also preying on the fact there could be an instant into turn one, alternative turn two, the first first major braking zone and perhaps he wants to be far enough back to see it happen and then pick up the places from all of the pieces that the drivers leave behind and it's a smart choice but certainly if you're not feeling as though you've got the pace to really contest up front at your class but also Smith will need to be wary of the fact the further he starts down the order then he may just end up in the end constraining himself to what he can achieve in up the races if luck does not go his way but he makes his way out Lesmo 1 into Lesmo 2 definitely looking sharp is the uh, Velosta right now in his hands he makes his way off the apex curve there of Lesmo 2 and we're on his way on on it down and a little bit further behind there you can see one of the Semper racing Hyundai Elantras falling on through and I do believe that's the car of Samir Midrovoski unless I'm mistaken and we're right now as we continue to see Smith making his way in towards Ascari coming off racing line now I think trying to get some more tyre temperature in and just getting himself out, set up for another lap for me while speaking of another lap we do owe you another on board lap ladies and gentlemen given the fact it went a bit wrong for our driver who we were riding on board with Luciano Bitfoot who is P3 currently so as we have Gavin Gardner making his way out of the final corner and he's going to make his way up towards the top He's not really got a toe to work with, however, and that's going to constrain him. But meanwhile, teammate Jamie Dory behind has, and we jump aboard the Audi RS3 driver as he heads on to what will be his penultimate qualifying lap. As he heads on down here, the Audi have been at the other end in terms of top speed, being the strongest of the cars here, but overall top speed in Steve gear in the tyre as well. And we can already see it where he's made way into turn number one. And then we're coming into the right hand, practice on the rev limit here, 151 miles. Now you can see there the car in his dash will tell him to shift up. He's got no spare gears to shift up. He is hitting the red line as he makes his way out of turn one into turn number two. 
break it down from 150 miles now, 125 metres of corner apex, through the left into right he goes as he exits Regia through turns two and three now in towards the Lesmos. Now here we'll see he'll hold higher gears given the gearing of the Audi and as he makes his way through the right hander now coming in towards Lesmo 2 very shortly as we see Gamgard run a bit wide there that's going to cost him what will be while the cars is getting the draft off him and now it's just Benjamin McCluskey in front as Dory takes plenty of apex curve there at Lesmo 2 got to be careful that of course and the fact that some cars can take it others cannot the Honda's really struggled with the race curves but all the Audi can just bolt over them and well, as Dory makes his way on down here well it looks as though taking his time to pull over but I believe might be getting himself set up for one more lap here as he breaks his way down the gears to fourth gear from 110 metres away from the entry to Ascari. Coming on through with the left, right, left, and now flat out all the way up towards the parabolic curve. We're going to stay on board all the way to the end to give you an idea of how much speed he'll be carrying in the run down. In fact, he backs off there, and Dory deciding not to commit to the remainder of this lap, getting himself set up for the final lap. And I think they're trying to get Gavin Gardner back in the, the group. Indeed, they are. And well, as they head on down in towards parabolic curve, what be a break in the 100 meters board you see it on the right of your screen there ladies and gentlemen and our drive is coming down to either third or fourth gear full for the Audis third for everyone else well that will be the completion of the lap as they make the way on through what will be at the final corner and well that third will do 30 seconds left on the clock if our drivers are not on their final laps they will be very shortly and well right now it's Akram Zanone who continues to hold on to what is overall pole position and with it prime pole Joseph Doble meanwhile is P2 and what is 1.2 tenths off of him and then Luciano Vitford is a further what is eight tenths of and well meanwhile in the AM class it is Kieran Smart who still holds on to AM pole position has put himself with nine places Kieran Mark Ken the second place AM driver right now but look at that on the overall timings ladies and gentlemen from first all the way down to 27th of Alan McCain it's less than eight tenths we have a very tight field right now and if anybody can find just a tenth out there inside this top 27 they may just be gaining four or five places for a tenth but they game multiple we could suddenly see somebody leap all the way out of the order right in but checker flag is out we've got a couple of drives in the pit line including Mitchell West Riley sharing them Gabriel Yumas Roy Plummer and Lee Horn and Peter Jagoslewski the road drives are out there what are we going to see as they make the way across the line here comes Smart then we'll wind this behind do either of them improve here for Track Scotland it doesn't look as though they do meanwhile Daniel Downing moves up to his P22 more drives to come on through including here with the second pack of cars and this is going to be Andrew Pike who we've focused on in amongst the mids here in the Honda Civic tyre bar as they make their way through the right hand and Mikey Dolan proves to P4 on a 51.911 just behind Swiro Deitch who is six tenths faster Meanwhile, as the drives come to time, and Darren Hills in the midst of this pack, he's P40 at the moment, improving towards the end lap. Can he find a bit more time right at the close? We'll have to wait and see. He moves up to P38, does Hills, and we can see some also improvements for what is Andrew Pike, but not enough to move him up the order, it would seem. Meanwhile, Nick Clibbins has moved up. James Smashenskow has moved up to P34. Clibbins has moved up to P8 on a 51.996. We've got most of our drives now at the end of the laps. We're waiting to see where the next-gen pink team can find some improvements out here, as they make the way on down, stand over as far to the right as possible, and was they make the way to the line, is it going to be improved for Gavin Gardner? He improved in what subsectors two and five, but it's not enough. What about Craig Tillerson, who's coming to the line? Well, as he comes on through, he's currently P42, and that's where he's going to say. Meanwhile, Slavomir Chavoski makes his way on around the corner, and as he does so, can he find some time here? The Semper Racing driver in the Hyundai Elantra, he's currently P40, he's out of position. He finds P38, it's a 53.128, but that is a surprise and not a welcome one. He is one of our strongest qualifiers in the prime class at Silverstone, but a change of circuit and style of circuit has cost him very dear. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is qualifying complete, and history has been made today in Akram Zanoon is the first ever Prime driver say overall pole in a qualifying session in the NXTCC, unless my memory doesn't serve me correctly, and it is Matthew Addy who holds that accolade. But for some reason, it, my brain tells me he picked up a P2 at Snetterton last season, and if so, Ancrum's known, definitely will be absolutely pleased with that. He'll have Joseph Doe with the leading pro on the front row with him, and then in the AM class, your pole setter P17 will be Kieran Smart in a shuffle of the field, and will Harley Bicknell start in P36, P6 in the AM class today. A very different circuit here and many drivers said about the fact that this was going to be a complete shake-up compared to Silverstone and what well, they were right but without further ado ladies and gentlemen it's time to head to the grid for race number one so the drivers make their way onto the grid this is how they'll line up for our first race of the day
It is going to be Akram Zanoon who takes pole position for the organisation ahead of Joseph Dole for Dole Sim Racing. Pram pole also going to Akram Zanoon. And then from our first row, it'll be on row number two, Luciano Vitford, who starts P3 for World of Racing. And then your overall championship leader with a 56.1 kilograms of success bars, which has definitely appealed to CXR Racing there in YouTube chat. The separation drive of Wojciech Sirodowicz takes P4. Mikey Dole lines up behind him, P5 for Dole Sim Racing, ahead of Alex Meredith and Next Gen P6. Now the eyes at Dover Double Sim Race and the iRace Esports is Nick Clearings on your full throw, with row number five going to Matthew Sheraton and Stuart Wyness. From the Aztec Race in the Track Scotland tries outside the top ten, best of SP11 is Jack Jeffries with the Red Rose Projects team ahead of Benjamin McCluskey for Next Gen Pink. And then we will see on row number seven, Gavin Gardner for Next Gen Pink, head of teammate Jamie Dory with the Next Gen Pink trio line up together P12 through to P14. Adam Delmont starts P15, looking to have another consistent day today for SRL with Next Gen Gold. Head of Patrick Falconer for JW Motorsport. Then we can see Kieran Smart for Track Scotland P17, your Am Pole Sitter. And what was a difficult day last time out at the Silverstone Circuit, but a stronger day today for the Scottish driver as he's ahead of the Englishman Ben Altria for Full Tilt B Motorsport, who starts P18. Kieran Sharp for the Sim Racing Collective and Matthew Addy for Next Gen start P19, P20, completing your top 20. Watch out for Adam McNally, meanwhile, starts P21 for SRL and Next Gen Gold. He'll be looking to try and make his way up the order as will Wayne Douglas for Next Gen Pink P22. Daniel Downing starts P23 for Goldwing Motorsport ahead of Luke Jones for JW Motorsport. And on your 13th row of the grid, it's going to be Mark Sykes for Next Gen and what will be your, sec your second place AM driver ahead of third place AM driver Jonathan Collins for Whiskey Runner Racing. Mark Kent starts P27 for Full Tilt V Motorsport ahead of Andrew Pike for the Sim Racing Collective. A different qualifying, a difficult qualifying session for Pike, no doubt about it, and he'll be looking for a strong race to start of the day. With Sam Van for Goldwing Motorsport and Alan McCain for iRace Esports completing a top 30. Jack Bolton starts P31 for Grant Motorsport in another solid qualifying performance for the Englishman ahead of fellow countryman privateer Mark Redford. And it's Marcel Fritsch for WS Racing Esports. I think he'll be favouring his chances when we go green flag racing. He's a stronger racer than qualifier and he's ahead of James Spencer's gal for Aztec Racing. And then on what is your 18th row of the grid? It's Shane Pickett for Ace of Spades Racing ahead of Harley Bicknell for JW Motorsport. Your AM Championship leader well down the order today. And then that is going to be what is your top 36, ladies and gentlemen. And I do believe then you will have what will be P37. iRace Esports is Sam Smith on the 19th row of the grid. Joined by Slower Mir Jawoski for Semper Racing. And then a re-swap for JW Motorsport and Darren Eels for Ace of Spades Racing. Complete your top 40. Duncan Murray starts P41, the 21st row of good for Goldwing Motorsport ahead of Craig at Tillerson. And the Fusion Racing Drive is followed up by Kevin Smith for Rhino Motorsport and Mitchell West for Mitch West's performance on his debut round of the season. With Riley Shannon having a difficult qualifying session starting P45 for Virtual Reality Autosports ahead of Gabriel Yilmaz for Aztec Racing. On your 24th row, it's next year's Roy Plummer and he'll be followed up by what will be at Piotr Jugoslewski for P48 for Semper Racing. And then we will have on what will be the final round of grid starting P49, last but not least, Lee Horn for next year started for the back of the grid and well it's going to be a tough one for him but he'll look to try and carve his way through as quickly as he can but that's all the grid set ladies and gentlemen as we look down to the front of the grid all the drivers are absolutely ready to go it's time for the lights to go on but who's going to be leading out of turns two and three it's going to be one red light two red lights three red lights four red lights four red lights and it's lights out and away we go for our first race of day as our drivers get off the side blocks down towards Curva Grande they go as they do and Crimson gets a good start but immediately under pressure from Joseph Dole as it's going to be the best part of what we 20,000 horsepower roaring its way into the opening corner and as they all come and down towards the opening right hand a flat out as they go all right now all the drivers just trying to take their time here and pick the right line we had an instant further back that is Mark Redford who's been collected a couple of other drivers as well have been picked up we'll have to take a look back at that in due course but meanwhile as all the drivers make their way through here here comes Roy Chicks for a day. He started P4. He's made his way into lead. He gets the inside in towards turn number two. Behind him is Joseph Doe. We're anchoring on the outside. It's going to be Swedish going for the lead. Contact between the two. Swedish is turned to the noon. Makes contact with Luciano Vitford. There's further contact as Mikey Doble is turned sideways there. Rejoins. But as he rejoins, the whole field scatters around him. It's a shake up in with the opening top 10. Just much further down the order. Carl going off in the rear of the pitch. I believe that might have been Matthew Sheraton in the rear of the pitch. Again, it wrong at the opening chicane as they all make their way through. Car off in the rear which has been Altria. Well, it's been a dramatic opening three corners. You may have been predicted it, and you were right. But as they make the way out of the second Lesmo, we'll point being right now that Joseph Dope is running away. He's absolutely rampant. He's two seconds clear, avoiding all the drama. And Akram's doing the lead in primary starting on pole. Is right now trying to keep everybody behind. 
as he heads on down towards the braking zone for Ascari. Blitford's on the inside, and well, the world of racing drive is looking to give a bit of contact between the two of them, and Blitford still on what will be the inside now in towards turn number eight, and gets the move done there, the world of racing driver, but now here comes Isaac Doval as they make the one through the rear of the picture. That is one of, I believe, Mark Kent going wrong at was Ascari. And we're going to have to get some replays a little bit later on in the race, ladies and gentlemen, but not right now. As they make the way down, it's going to be three, almost four wide here into the braking zone. Alex Merida has found his way around the outside of everybody. He's been able to steer clear of the drama. He takes the lead of the prime class, runs a little bit wide out of the final corner, and we might get a warning for that, but as they make the way to the timeline, after one lap of racing, it is Joseph Doval who is just running away right now. 3.2 seconds clear. Alex Merida is P2, your prime leader, followed by Nick Clemens, then Luciano Vitford P4, Jack Jeffries P5, Akram Snow P6, Benjamin McTusky P7, Patrick Fountain P8, followed by Isaac Doval, Wedgix Rodai back into P10 already. Jamie Doy P11 just getting ahead in the draft as they make the way down. And as they do, I do believe we have had a safety car called, ladies and gentlemen, and that has been due to the open at lap instant. And we have confirmation we do have a safety car. And well, the momentum stops there. And excuse me, the safety car being due to the instant that we did see on the start finish straight, I do believe. And now everybody will be bringing the pace down. It will be coming down to a pace of about 60 miles an hour behind the Porsche Cayman GT4. And we're just as we're getting ready to go on to lap number two and see how it continued. Well, the pace will be sapped out of the race for a brief moment, but this is only going to shorten the race distance. And what that's also going to do is start to help out will be the Hyundai Elantras, who definitely will have been worrying going into this race about the tyre degradation rate. But goodness me, as our drivers make the way on through the opening couple of quarters but this gives us ample opportunity to take a look back at what exactly happened at the race start and we had a couple of drives start from the pit lane including Piotr Czechoslowski and also was Craig Tillerson but meanwhile what exactly happened to Daniel Downing at the start here's the replay to explain so they made the way on down, I believe there. Oh, goodness me, the camera being obscured slightly, but I think contact with the Track Scotland car, perhaps. We will get a follow-up replay. Some other cars being involved in that as well. Let's see if we can get a better angle of what happened to Daniel Downing. And, well, I don't think we're going to get an angle from there. There we are. And contact with, I believe, that was the JW Merciful car of Luke Jones, which propelled Daniel Downing one way, then the other. Meanwhile, further contact there between three cars just a little bit further in front. And that was Mark Redford, James Spencer's gown, Sam Smith. What exactly happened to Redford, meanwhile? We ride on board here with Redford. And, well, I think, oh, goodness me, and contact there as he had to put the brakes on due to an instant in front of him. And that triggered off a chain reaction. And, well, the privateer between a rock and a hard place. We take another look back at that from what will be, I do believe, the exterior cameras. And here you can see, I think, Redford, in the end, trying to move aside and will be collected there by the S-Tech racing car, James Spencer's gown. And everybody else coming to the scene of the instant and well we take a look back at that from what was Reese Watts perspective and well as he made his way on down he'll see Daniel down on the left you'll see the car starting to scatter to the left as well and in the end gets clipped by the instant and it all goes wrong for the JW Motorsport driver well as they make the way on through we look back to the live racing pictures ladies and gentlemen and well as they head on through it was the opening quarter that's the reason why the safety car was called it caused due to the, was the major incident and remember our drivers are permitted to race up to what is the start finish line on the lap at which the safety car is called the safety car waits our drives at the end of the start finish straight so therefore as they make the way on down right now the start finish straight that explains to yourself cool sharp racing in the youtube chat that luciano vitford is down a p3 now we're not exactly sure where it, Mer meredith has made a pass after the safety car line or the start finish line if that's happened that will most likely be investigated after the race is today should it be reported by the world of racing driver but as it stands at the moment joseph Dewey is still your leader his lead has been neutralized of course with alex meredith p2 your prime leader ahead of luciano bitford and well i can tell you one thing the world of racing driver if he has lost p2 he hasn't lost sight of it there's no doubt about it as we're on our third lap now and well it's 11 lap race not 12 there's been a slight update to the schedule due to the length of the lap times and well we'll be having 11 lap race Races today, but the point being, as I try to make the way around, we're going to very shortly, I think, have the safety car in soon. I suspect it may be the end of this lap because the majority of our drivers have prepared their cars. And I think that right now, just backing the car slightly, and there might be a bit of shuffling going on with regards to positions. We're not 100% sure. We will wait and see when we do get the restart. And we'll let you know when that restart is coming. But right now, we well, might have been asked to give P3 to Nick Clevins, but if he has been asked to do so, well, that's something that we haven't heard about. And, well, that will be the race director speaking to in regards to the order of the drives when they cross the start-finish line at the end of lap number one. 
But as they make the way on down here towards what will be the first of two Lesbos. Meanwhile, we need to take a look back at some of the other incidents that happened on lap number one. And this was Roy Plummer and Riley sharing them, I believe, making their way up towards what was turn of one. In fact, Roy Plummer doing well to avoid most of it. And then, unfortunately, the car of what was, I do believe, Slavomir Trawoski making its way across the circuit and Plummer's contact. And as we can see, the Riley sharing them in damage as he made his way into turn one. It's being caught up. And we do have confirmation that the safety car is going to be in at the end of this lap as we return to your live pictures ladies and gentlemen well we won't be getting any more replays the instance that we did have on what was the opening lap we did also have a couple of smaller instances for drivers at what was excuse me i do believe the regia chicane and well that was involved in what was none other than voyage experience also mikey dole being picked up there zach cramson went absolutely defensive trying to hold on to the lead and not pushing the blame to him but he was really trying to hold on there and in the end it didn't work out for him or a number of drivers but as they make the way up to speed now the safety car is going to be in the end of this lap we can confirm it once again safety car's already pulled away and with that joseph doe has already gone he's let himself go before they've even made their way halfway down the back straight and the double sim racing driver letting the safety car go nice and early is now just going to try and run right away as we're back to green flag racing ladies and gentlemen on to lap number four and as we do we'll lose the open for immediately going to the offensive here as he goes on the attack across the start finish line in towards the long run towards turn and one but the thing for the world of racing drivers is he's got to take his time with this he can't just make the move immediately given the fact they've got the best part of a mile to go before they make the way in towards what will be the first braking zone for him right now he's got to tuck on behind and and wait for his opportunity to be right on board here with the number 60 car and as he continues to hug the back of the Honda Civic Type R with two and a half seconds to Jack Jeffries behind who's found his way all the way up to P5 for a P11 start the number of start for Jeffries no doubt about it with it in the end not quite able to stay close enough down into the braking zone here for the first chicane perhaps the sign has take it a little bit cooler this time around because of the fact cold tyres is they have lost quite a bit of temperature since we went racing but as he makes his way up to the Lesbos he'll be getting to go on the offensive very shortly and also cognizant of the fact that right now he'll want to work with the drives in front of him to try and break away from the man who's had one of the best starts of the day here for Red Grove Project. So he continues to chase, but you notice that the Hyundai Elantra drive is falling a little bit further back and perhaps the pace not quite with him. But as the drives make the way on through what is turn at number five. Meanwhile, we look a little bit further down the order and this is Craig Tillerson who's had a bit of a difficult run through the chicane. And that being the chicane of Regia, and with the Fusion Race to drive him to gradually rejoin here, doing so in a safe manner, but behind Daniel Downing, when well, he's going around the outside there of the car, Jonathan Collins, that's very slowly making its way out around. I think Collins might have an issue with the car, the Whiskey Runner Racing Drive right now, trying to recover. Perhaps he was trying to serve a slowdown there for track limits, and therefore opting to just take it cautiously. But either way, the 1 2 3 drive losing four places for the price of what was one very slow run towards Lesbo 1. And right now, as the pressure Sam Benoit's fine in the fight for P42. But as they head down towards the braking zone, Roy Plummer, meanwhile, just a bit further up the road, the next gen driver on the inside goes Kevin Smith looking for an opportunity. Meanwhile, getting it wrong. That's going to be Jaworski. And well, it's gone very wrong there for the separate racing drivers. Everybody comes descending on through. And as they do, they all avoid the potential carnage. But it's going to be free, four wide on the exit of Ascari. And at the head of this pack, it is going to be Samba Knowles here, who right now is chasing after Daniel Dan and Mitchell West. But he's got Matthew Sheraton for company. And they're fighting for what is the last of points of the prime class, Daniel Downing, who's only three temps up the road is P15 Pro-Am. You'd think they're battling for the race win right now. Well, to be fair, every point they gain will feel like a win for them today as they make the way through Parabolica Curve. And as they make the way out of the final corner, Matthew Addy right now behind Matthew Sheraton, or is he? He's alongside in the battle of the two Matthews. And these two, we saw plenty of fighting between at Silverstone. And they continue their fight as they tuck into line of stern here, making the way down towards turn and one. But it's a long run once again as they head on down. And meanwhile, we do look up to Jack Bolton as a running in P. 20 right now the Grant Motorsport driver in the 31 P7 in prime he has got Kieran Smart the second place AM driver who's lost the lead of the AM class after the instance on the opening lap well right now Mark Sykes leads the AM class he's P17 as they come in towards the right hander and on towards turn number five as they make the way up towards the braking zone here and well as they come on in the Grand Motorsport driver right now he's definitely got some pressure from behind but I do wonder whether he might be smarter here letting Smart go no pun intended here as they head on down just for the simple reason that the more he potentially fights with Smart if Smart's the faster driver it's going to cost him time chasing after Luke Jones the P6 Prime and that's where the points will be for Bolton if he wants to get some more points on the board but as they head down towards the braking zone in towards the left hand of Forescari well right now we're heading towards the halfway point of this race we'll be interrupted by the safety car earlier on but still 
got plenty of racing to go and everyone absolutely galvanised to make it to the end, no questions about it. And remember, this is only the first of three races here today at Monza. And right now, as we see Smart just staying in behind, well, from then, we look back up to Benjamin McCluskey here and with the next gen pink driver running my eyes at Dale Patrick Falcon, the P7 in front. And with the JW Motorsport driver leads a long line of cars. We're watching Swirodich and Jamie Doy on the back of this. And Swirodich, the driver who lost out quite considerably on the opening lap, not losing out enough to fall a long way down the order. And the Semper Racer driver just buying his time, but also knowing that 56 kilograms of success bars is going to make these long drag races down the straights a little bit tougher for him to stomach compared to some of his rivals. Speaking of which, here comes Isaac Double looking up the inside of Patrick Falcon. Falcon on the outside in towards turn one, they go. And well, the Audi driver here is going to have to lift off slightly to mitigate the understeer. And in doing so, cuts back in behind, picks up the toe, and now can go on the offensive in towards turn number two. But I get the feeling he may just decide to tuck one in here because it will be quite the lunge if he goes for it. As all the drives make the way, nose to tail on a throw, the left into right, and onwards they go now towards turn number four, in towards Lesbo once again. But as they do further behind, you can see there in the rear of the picture, Mark Sight, your leading AM driver, P17 for the next gen. And we're ahead of Andrew Pike, Luke Jones, and Jack Bolton. We're then second place, the class driver, Kieran Smart, still chasing after Bolton as they make the way out around. From them, batting side by side down in towards Regier. We do have Sam Vidal's here fighting with Wayne Douglas. And well, as they head onto the race, it's going to be at the prime Audi driver of Vinoles, who keeps the pro behind him for now as he looks to continue to get those elbows out and make sure he doesn't lose any places. But as they come in towards the Lesbos, from them a little bit further down the order, Reese Watt on the offensive. A bit of contact there to Mitchell West. West turns sideways, collects the car and catches it in time. And the Mitch West performance driver doing a very good job there to show car control. Albeit I wouldn't be surprised there's a little bit of suspension damage on the car as he brings himself back into the running order of drivers. But the 101 driver definitely having a baptism by fire today on his first race of the season as he makes his way onwards towards the Ascari chicane. Well, we've been looking further down the order. Let's look all the way back up to the front. Let's not forget about all the drivers here on this grid and as Joseph Dover continues to lead well the advantage he has over Alex Meredith is only two tenths if that as they head to lap number seven another five laps to go and as they do well this top six of ways Doble followed by Meredith then Clemens then Vitford then Jeffries and Zanoon now getting closer and closer with Isaac Doble meanwhile sitting two seconds behind and trying to inch closer here as they make the way down they start for this straight. We ride on board with the race leader of Joseph Doble and the Doble Sim Racing Drive 9. All he's got to do is be smart about his positioning. I think Alex Meredith right now is of two mindsets. Does he go for the overall win and not only puts himself in the history books or does he just simply focus on leading the prime class with Nick Clemens, his second place rival, immediately behind him and looking to try and take a prime win of his own. It'll be his first of the season. It'll be the first for both of them this season. And as they make their way in towards the Lesbos right now, it's a tough one to call from Alex Meredith for the fact He'd love to push a little bit further, and being up front is always a great thing, but it's not necessarily the right thing at Monza compared to most other circuits. As they come through at Lesbo number two, and meanwhile, Bitford also on the back of this group, and where you can count the fact the world of racing driver just waiting still as Jack and Jeffrey struggling to get within a second of the top four. They are gradually breaking away as they make the way on and down in towards what will be the Ascari chicane. You can see Bitford very close there. In fact, Clemens, I think, is now to think more and more about whether he battles under braking here in that Honda. Bitford, to be fair, not showing any signs of wanting to make the move just yet. I get the feeling he'll be waiting for the penultimate lap, and that's when you'll see him start to pick his way through. We know that Bitford's a very strong offensive driver. He showed that in Season 5, and the fact he was willing to go for more moves than most. And in fact, he did have one of the highest overtake percentages of all the drives in Season 5 as he makes his way down towards the break. He's overturned number 9. Onto the brakes they go once again with Jeffries and Zanoon behind, and then the second pack here, which is headed by Isaac Doble, where you do have a lead pack of 6, followed by another Another pack of what is the best part of eight cars they made the way on around towards another lap. But you can see everyone right now just eager to work together. And it's almost as if it's the calm before the storm here. Everyone's agreed a bit of a temporary trose. And that is because right now this pack of P7 through to P13, they all want to catch these. They want to make it a 13-way fight for the win. But right now, I don't think they're going to be given that opportunity, or are they? As Do Joseph Doble once again has the encroaching presence of Meredith, and Nick Clemens is looking menacing now as they make the way through Cova Grande. And we can see Clemens getting closer and closer. They get ready to make the way underneath the billboards and the dashboards here. What they do? What's it going to be? Will it be a move from Clemens? No, it's not. He's thinking about it, but knowing he doesn't want to lose sight of the race leader either, just for the simple reason he could also 
take a race bit of his own. But they head in towards turn number four will mean, well, as they go onto the brakes, we look from them to a little bit of batting further down the order. And this is three wide down the start finish straight. And that in the middle is going to be Wayne Douglas who parts the seas. And well, as he does so, contact there. It doesn't quite work out with Kevin Smith. It would see further contact with Daniel down into the room with Smith. And down he is sent to the gravel trap. And was the car goes sideways, that's also going to be with him there. The car of Reese, what has gone very, very wrong for them. And that's what happens when you barrel your way. Oh, goodness me. And that is a huge shunt from what is, I do believe, Riley Sheridan to the back of Dan. He's pretty coming to the corner, blindsided by the fact he's gone through the long right hand. And the virtual reality all sports driver, it continues the domino effect. And Slavomir Jovoski once again, has found himself right as the victim of a major incident here at Monza. And that car is going nowhere. And will well, goodness me, if that's going to be another safety car, that may curb the momentum of the end of this race. We'll have to wait and see. But as the racing goes on here for our race leaders, they head through the final corner. They'll be going on to lap number nine shortly. So the safety car is going to be caught. It's going to be very late indeed. And it's not leaving the pit lane as I look out my concrete booth window. Or is it? I think... I have to wait to see. In fact, we do have a safety car, ladies and gentlemen. And, well, that is for the instant we've seen on the run down towards what was excuse me, turn at number one, and well, this is going to back the field up once again, and well, if they can quickly get it cleared, the incident has happened at turn number one, and get the drivers reorganised, then we could be looking at what will be a very, very close sprint race to the finish, after what has been a very dramatic midpoint of this race, I think everyone was getting ready to go on the attack over the last three laps, but right now, it definitely looks as though all the drivers are going to have probably one lap, perhaps two, if we're fortunate, and when we do, well, it is going to be absolutely phenomenal, all the way to end. This is just race one of the day, but right now your top 10 is as follows. Joseph Dole is leading, and well, the last time we put that in a sense that Joseph Dole was leading, you'd have to look back to the early stages of what was season five. He's not, he didn't take a win in season five of the NXT CC, and right now he could be on course to take it his first win in a long time. Behind him is Alex Merritt, if you're pro am leader, the next gen driver right now. Looking to make amends from the difficulties of Silverstone. Nick Clemens, the second place prime driver, right behind him in P3. And then we have Luciano Vitfoot, the driver who right now everyone's keeping their eyes off for wherever he tries to pounce. Well, he's P4 ahead of Jack Jeffries. And in Akram Tanoon, your pole sitter, P3 in the prime class currently, P6 overall ahead of Isaac Doval, Patrick Falker, Jamie Durant, and Benjamin McCluskey. And Wojciech Swerdoch still sitting in what is P11. Best of rest right now as the drivers make the way on through. And well, as they do, Mark Sykes, your AM leader, currently P18. Kieran Smart has been picking up the places, however, ladies and gentlemen. That should be said. Smart is only two places behind right now. And you can see him there. The track Scotland drive pulling off the racing line. He's keeping his eyes on Sykes. I think mean, he wants to get to Sykes' mirrors and say to him, look, I'm coming for you. We may not have long left, but I'm coming for you every step of the way. And will the psychological games that will be played all the way through to the end. And well, we do have confirmation, ladies and gentlemen, the safety car is going to be in at the end of this lap with the drivers who are involved in that incident cleared of the circuit and will repair work ongoing with the cars. Many of them have used already fast repairs, so their race may effectively be over, but the safety car being there for the reason to make sure the circuit is clear for going racing. Well, now as Joseph Dole makes his way into what is the Ascari chicane, he's going to be the one who gets to go green flag first and foremost of all the drivers, but when will he go? Well, he's leaving it quite late. For the, well, he's leaving it quite early for the safety car pull away. He's already back in the field up. Safety car is half its way down the final stretch towards the parabolic curve. So Double can't quite go just yet. He could go when the safety car makes his way to the corner. So long as he doesn't catch it at the start finish line, Double goes. Well, Joseph Double did this once. He's going to do it again. And when he makes his way down towards what will be turn at number nine. Will it work out for Joseph Doval? Let's find out as they roar their wound down. Meanwhile, just behind Jamie Dory looking for a move on Patrick Falcon. And Falcon are doing well here to fend off with the two-time NXTCC champion. And right now, the JW Motorsport driver finding himself at a completely different end of the field today. And with Jamie Dory trying to push him along here, trying to give him a bit of momentum to make his way off to lead us. But with two laps to go here, it looks as though already Falcon has put a split in the field. And with 1.8 seconds to put his eyes at Doval in front of Jamie Dory, he's not wasting any more time he's got to make a move sooner rather than later as they go side by side down the start finish straight in towards turn number one but as they make the way in towards the break it well not the breaking zone just a lift off zone here because it is too wide into this corner and there's going to be understeer well Falcon on the inside Dory around the outside the tyres are relatively warm they give each other just enough space and Dory does get ahead Falcon meanwhile 
tucks in. Here comes Benjamin McCluskey as well. The next-gen pink squad are all on the offensive, but Wojciech Swerdajic is also trying to put his way into this fight as he looks up the inside. Can't quite find it for Semper Racing as they make the way from left into right. But as they do, meanwhile, Kieran Smart picks up another place up the inside. It's a daring move. It's Smart is contact with Jones as Jones made to go with the apex curve. And meanwhile, turns sideways into the barrier. That is Jack Bolton, whose race falls a part of the final hurdle. And once they all make the way through, that's going to be heartbreak for Bolton and the team. But meanwhile, it means many other drives further down can pick up some place, including track Craig Tillerson, as I've almost lost the words to the Fusion Racer Drive battle side by side with Kevin Smith for P8 in the AM class. Graham Van Uber takes it into Lesbo 1 and gets back on the racing line just in time for Lesbo 2. But they make the way off through the right hand, a bit further contact there. Smith getting very close to Tillerson, poor run of a Lesbo 2. Was they make the way on it down Sarah Glio. Meanwhile, Luke Jones at the head of this group of cars as they fight over with P19. We're going from left into right here, and right now, Jones just keeping what is Ben Altria Bay and Mark Sykes being allowed to break away as a result of this. And you see Sykes they just make his way briefly through the camera shot as they head down towards the final quarter for the penultimate time in this race. Flashing lights, if you look a bit further out the order, those are the lights of what is, I do believe, Kieran Sharp. And that Andrew Pike, we should point out, but side by side here between Jamie Dory and where's Gavin Gardner. And as they make their way on through the right hander of turn at number nine, where's the final lap of the first race, ladies and gentlemen. And here we go. Who is going to be winner? Who is going to be your top 10 finishers? It's time to find out. It was already Jack Jeffries has caught up to the back of Luciano Vitford and alongside Zach Cremtonoon. But Joe Zidoe right now with what is four attempts on advantage. He's got a bit of breathing room to work with Jeffries. Meanwhile, has got Zanoon all on his inside as they head into was turn number one and Jeffries here having to give the space but it's getting very close to the apex here it's being up behind Isaac Doble looking for an opportunity through there goes Zanoon tucks the inside Jeffries covers him off as they make the way down towards the breaking zone and right now the Red Grove Project's trying to hold on for his best result of the season so far meanwhile further behind there's Patrick Falcon to still fend off Benjamin McCluskey in the fact that Jamie Dory has fallen a long way back and well as they make the way out of turns two and three McCluskey on the inside and the exit of Wes Regia in towards the left where he goes and McCluskey is going to make the moves here comes Swoodage looking to spear his way on the inside he used the space that's afforded to him. Can he make the move for what will be P9? Well, the weight's holding back in the battle between the two Audis. He's up the inside. It's a smooth move from Swirro Deitch, and that's why he's up to P9 as they make the way down the Seraglio straight. Meanwhile, looking at your leaders as they head on down in towards what will be Ascari. Well, Joseph Doble right now still holding on. That's Alex Meredith behind Doble putting all the defensive stops in now as they head in towards turn number six. And through the left, into right, and left they go. But the Phoenix for Meredith right now, he'll have one more run at this. He'll have it up towards parabolic and if he can nail it out of there he may even have it in the drag race to the finish line but Joseph Doble well no he's got to push it to the absolute limit but he can't afford to hit the limiter he can't afford a single miss shift as they make the way in towards the vital quarter then Doble on the inside pulls back to the racing line Meredith meanwhile close but he can't quite find it and as they come through the final corner Doble parks it on apex there cutting himself to the inside but here comes Alex Meredith he looks around the outside he can't find it and I think as they head towards the timing line the checker flag waves and afterwards been 11 laps of absolute chaos Joseph Doble wins ahead of Alex Meredith your prime winner Nick Clemens completes the overall podium P2 prime Luciano Vitford P4 ahead of Jack Jeffries with Isaac Doe ahead of Benjamin McCluskey, Wojciech Swerdajic, then it's Patrick Falcon and Kieran Sharp in complete your top 10. Mark Sykes comes on through to take the AM win in what is P17 overall. And will Kieran Smart in the end, despite the drama battling with Luke Jones for P18, he does take P2 in the AM class, P24 overall ahead of Mark Kent. And we've got more drivers to come to the line yet, including what is Gabriel Yilmaz, who comes on P32 ahead of Craig Tillerson. And then we do have what is the last finishers of the race, including Riley Sheringham and so Roy Plummer, and what I do believe Roy Plummer has already taken his checkered flag, effectively a lap down. In fact, no, he's not a lap down. He is going to be a last finish of this race. Wait for him to come to the line. But whilst he's making his way through Ascari, well, meanwhile, it's been a long time since we said this, ladies and gentlemen, but well done to Joseph Doble for returning to the top step of the overall podium for Doble Sim Racing. And what a drive from the number 11 driver. And in the end, Alex Meredith huffing and puffing every step of the way, but he couldn't find a way through, nor could Nick Clemens. And, well, Luciano Bitford taking a P4, but I think you'll know there's still plenty of more points out there. He's just got to find him in races to a three. But meanwhile, let's not forget about our last finisher on the lead lap. Here comes Roy Plummer. He had a bit of a dramatic midpoint of the race, but he'll take P41 and with it, 11th place in the AM class as he comes to the timeline and takes the final checker flag of the lead lap finishers as he comes on down the start finish straight. And congratulations to him. 
game. And to all of our finishers, of course, ladies and gentlemen, it's just as much about making it to the end of the race as it is about where you finish. And, well, as we look back to our top drivers inside the top ten, a huge, huge performance from Jack Jeffries, the Red Grove Projects driver, taking a P5. And, well, the pro driver not daunted by the pressure of Isaac Dole behind him, nor Benjamin McCluskey of Wojciech Swerdajic. And Swerdajic recovering to P8 after open lap instant. We thought it dropped a lot further down the order, but it wasn't to be. And the Semper Racing driver demonstrating why he is called Mr. Resilient when it all goes wrong. Buzzer drives all come into the pits. Also, Stuart Whiting is there. The Track Scotland team having a great start to their day, albeit slightly falling off the script for Kieran Smart towards the end, but still taking a P2 in the M class. And Whiting is taking P3, his first podium of the season in the Prime class, and he'll be very happy with that, knowing that he had to work hard to get it, and he really was the best of the rest in the Primes, outside Meredith and Clemens, who did take the top two steps. As the drives make the way in to what is at the pit lane. And we've still got a couple more drives to cover down as they all queue up. A few cars definitely bruised and battered, but they'll be looking to get the hammers out in order to be able to straighten the body workout in preparation for race number two. And, well, as they all come on down, let's take you through those race results subject to any stewards' inquiries. And here they are. So after the incredible race number one for what was round number two of the NXTCC Season 6, powered by IMB Racewear and brought to you on iRacing, Joseph Doble taking a victory for Doble Sim Racing by a tenth at the finish line over your pro and winner Alex Meredith for next-gen racing. IRAC Esports is Nick Clemens, third place round off the overall podium. And, well, that's going to be a huge amount of success bars for both Alex Meredith and Nick Clemens. Remember, they will be taking the success bars, which is greater out of Prime or 30 overall. And overall is greater at this point. So they're going to fill the highest weights they've probably ever had in race number two. But we'll come to that in due course. But Luciano Vitfoot, meanwhile, deserving our attention. Fourth place there, the World of Races, right? And unfortunate to lose out on some fighting action on the open laps due to the safety car. But still taking a P4. Some great points gained. And still two more more races to go for the Dutchman. Jack Jeffries, P5 for Red Grove Projects, ahead of Isaac Doble for Doble Sim Racing, who in the end was the best part of seven tenths behind, and then Benjamin McCluskey for Next Gen at Pink, doing well to hold on to P7, with the ever-present Wojciech Swerdajic, P8 there for Semper Racing. Patrick Falconer and Kieran Sharp for JW Motorsport and the Sim Racing Collective complete your top 10. Gavin Garner, best dressed P11, wasn't quite able to finish inside the top 10, but will take that result for Next Gen Pink. Head of Stuart Wynas, your third place finish in the Prime class. And the Track Scotland Drive completes your Prime podium of Alex Meredith, Nick Clemens and Stuart Wynas, with Adam Delman ahead of Adam McNally and Andrew Pike to round off your top 15. In the top 20 that was then completed by what was the quintet of Jamie Dory for Next Gen Pink in a late instant costume deer on the final lap ahead of AM winner Mark Sykes P17 there for Next Gen and he'll be absolutely pleased with that carrying on the good form from Silverstone with Luke Jones, Ben Altria and Duncan at Marais completing a top 20 and behind the Goldwing Motorsport Drive from South Africa an unfortunate end to the race for At Kremsenoon who was right up the front for so long but the organisation driver in an altercation that we saw on the final lap dropping him a long way down and in the end to P21. Still, from there, Alan McCain, P22 for Irish Esports, head of Mikey Doble. And then Kieran Smart and Mark Kane completing your AM podium, P24, P25. Second place on the track, Scotland driver. And third place on the podium for Full Tilt V Motorsports Kent. Marcel Fritch, P26, making the best part of what was 10 places gained over the course of this race, ahead of Shane Piggott, with his teammate for Ace of Spades racing Darren Ills just behind, missing out on the AM podium, but a P4 in class, he'll be pleased with that. And your top 30 being completed by Sam Smith and Harley Bicknell. Wayne Douglas, P31, ahead of Gabriel Yilmaz with Craig Tillerson, James Mason Scout and Reese Watt to your P35. Mind the JW Motorsport Drive was Jonathan Collins, Whiskey Runner Racing, with Matthew Sheraton and Mitchell West, and then what was the pair of Kevin Smith and Sam Van Oles complete your top 40. Well, that unfortunate late instant through the opening corner for Kevin Smith cost him some places gained earlier on in the race. Ryan Plummer, P41, behind the Goldwyn Motorsport Driver, Sam Van Oles, and the next gen driver's your last lead lap finisher. Finishing a lap down, both Jack Bolton and Riley Sheringham, and the Grant Motorsport Drive will be few after was a very solid race all the way to the end but nine is still two more races to go and the virtual reality auto sports driver unfortunately blindsided into the opening corner on the final lap three laps down for mark redford slamomir travoski and also daniel downing and also peter jacobslevski five laps down there for matthew addy at p48 and then we can see Lee Horn, your sole retiree from this race, a non-finisher as he did not complete over half the race distance. Unfortunately, the car not making its way to the grid and the next-gen car, P49. 
Well, that was our first race today, ladies and gentlemen. An absolutely dramatic one, no doubt about it. And well, good news in store. We've got two more races to come. And well, we are going to be back in approximately what will be seven to eight minutes time for the build-up to race number two. Don't go anywhere. You won't want to miss it. And as we do step away, here's a quick word from our title sponsor for this season, IMB Racewear.
Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we are back then for the build-up to race number two. We're running a couple of minutes behind schedule due to the fact race one went slightly longer as a result of two safety cars. But whether we're on schedule or not, one thing that we are definitely on course for is an absolutely brilliant continuum of the racing here at Italy in the Monza circuit with the fact race number one could not have had more drama and if you'd asked it to in the fact that we did see plenty of battles between drives, we saw two safety cars that brought out by some rather nice nasty shunts and all in between we got to see some thrilling racing and while the drivers get set for the second race of the day track temperature right now holding at steady around where's the 40 degrees centigrade mark indeed all the drivers still feeling the heat out there and as they get set for what is another race coming up shortly i get the feeling and i'm sure you guys and girls at home as well are going to be getting the feeling that we are on course for another absolutely brilliant round of racing here or at least the continuation of it in race number two but as we do, we do look to our winner in the AM class in race number one, and that's none other than Mark Sykes, as he makes his way on around there through turns two and three, and up towards four he goes, and as he does so, we say hello to a good number of you in the chat who have dropped messages in since we concluded race number one, including John Meredith, who we wave our hands to and say hello in return in the YouTube chat, and also to Andrew at Point there in the YouTube chat, and also to Matt Emmons in the Facebook chat, who's cheering on Kevin Smith for Verano Motorsports, of course. And, well, John, you're not too late for the action in the YouTube chat for this race number one, but I'm sure there's going to be plenty more action in races two and three after Alex Meredith taking up what was the win in the prime class in race number one and just missing out on what was the overall win and he had to hold off this man all the way to line Nick Living to IRAC Sports and well we always like to get a quick word with one or two of our drivers before we go racing and well as we do get ready to go racing once again let's try and get a word with one of our drivers a little bit further on down the order and get their perspective who's available for a quick word and well I believe we are going to get a patch through to none other than what was our winner in race number one in the AM class and we're going to be hearing a word or two from what is Mark Sykes as we get a pat through to his machine and as we quickly get a word up with him Mark have you got 60 seconds for a quick chat of course I have to well Mark race number one so you take the victory in the AM class your first AM win of the season and well it's been some time since we've seen you on top form at the Bonza circuit I mean how does it feel to have taken a win in an absolutely chaotic race Oh, it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I managed to keep out of all the chaos. There was cars going off left, right and the centre around me. I had a car sort of slide in front of me. But luckily this race, I stayed out of it. I stayed out of the mess. That was, uh, from my point of view, I just kept my head down and, and concentrated on what I was doing. And race number two is around the corner. Your close rival, Kieran Smart, is going to be starting P24. He was right on your heels at the end of race number one until an unfortunate instant put him a bit further down the order. Are you expecting him to come charging through after you in race two? Uh, hopefully, mate. I've got, obviously, P1 waiting am, which is going to have me a little bit. So I'm out on circuit at the moment, just um, practicing with the weight on because I've not had this weight before. But, um, yeah, I'm hopefully going to keep in touch with some of the faster guys in front of me uh keep with the slip because this is quite a high slipstream circuit um and then do my best as usual well mark with only 30 seconds to go we wish you all the best for race number two and we'll see you at the checkered flag thank you paul cheers mate And as we heard from Mark Sykes, your AM winner in our first race of the day and concerned about Kieran Smart trying to come through the field. And, well, speaking of the Track Scotland driver, here he is. And will he be able to find his way past what will be eight cars in front in order to try and take on AM victory, his first AM win of the season? We'll get to see it very shortly, folks, as we're only, what is, seconds away from going to what will be the transition to the grid. And as all of our drivers get set and ready to go, we do say hello to Daniel Fritz in the YouTube chat, who's tuning on Whiskey Runners Racing. And without further ado as we see Riley Shannon here in a repaired Honda looking to go racing once again. What will it be for our drivers in race number two? Let's find out. So the drivers make the way onto the grid. This is how they'll line up for our second race of the day. It is Joseph Doble who takes pole position after his win in race number one for Doble Sim Racing and is joined on the front row by Alex Meredith, the next-gen racing driver, your prime winner from race one, but now carrying the best part of 48 kilograms of success balance well beyond what he'll be used to and indeed carrying the overall weight that may hold him back. Speaking of being held back, Nick Clemens was held back by Alex Meredith in race number one and that's why he starts P3 for IRC Sports. For the second place, Brian Drive will be looking to go for the win at this race 
no doubt about it. All eyes will be on the world of racing's Luciano Vitfoot, meanwhile, who starts P4. And then the fact after missing out on what could have been the win in race one with the misfortunate time of the safety car, he'll be hoping this race will be a little bit calmer and he can cut his way through. But he's got Jack Jeffries for Red Grove Projects and Double Sim Racing's Isaac Doble on the third round of the grid behind him, with Patrick Falconer there a little bit further back because he's got between him two drives in the form of Benjamin McCluskey for Next Gen Pink and Simple Racing for Wojciech Racing on your fourth row of the grid. Patrick Falconer, speaking of which, starts P9 for JW Motorsport ahead of Kieran Sharp for the Sim Racing Collective. And then we do have Gavin Gardner for Next Gen Pink, who starts P11 at Best of Rest. There is Stuart Wyness for Track Scotland. Keep your eyes out for the Track Scotland driver, the Scotsman, doing great work in race number one to make his way through to P12. Can he get into the top 10 for the second race of the day? We then do have on row at number seven, Adam Delmont for SRM with Next Gen Gold and Adam McNally, his teammate, with Andrew Pike starting P15 for the Sim Racing Collective ahead of Jamie Dory for Next Gen Pink. And then Mark Sykes starts P17, the Am pole sitter for Next Gen, looking to make it two wins out of two. And he has the company of Luke Jones just a bit further behind him. We then do have from the JW Motorsport drive to complete the top 20, the pairing of what is their Ben Altria for Full Tilby Motorsport and Goldwyn Motorsport's Duncan Moraes, with At Krems Noon for the organisation starting P21, ahead of Alan McCain for Iris Esports. And Mikey Doe will be starting P23 after a dramatic and dismal race one. The double sim racing drive's got it all to do from much further down the field, being counted him cutting his way through. Kieran Smart joins him on the twin one well, what is the 12th row of the grid for Track Scotland P24. And then we do have on the 13th row of the grid Mark Kemp for Full Tilt B Motorsport and Marcel Fritsch for WS, WS Racing Esports. With Shane Pig at P27 for Ace of Spades Racing, joined on the 14th row by his teammate Darren Hills, and then Sam Smith for IRAC Esports and Harley Bicknell complete your top 30. We then have Wayne Douglas, P31, for Wiz Next Gen Pink, ahead of Gabriel Yilmaz for Aztec Racing. With Fusion Racing's Craig Tillerson, having a great race in race one, looking for more in race number two. And it's P34 to James Smash as Gal for Aztec Racing. We then have Reece Watt for JW Motorsport, who starts P35, ahead of Jonathan Collins for Whiskey Runner Racing. And then we'll have on row at number 19, Matthew Sheraton for Aztec Racing, and Mitchell West for Mitch West Performance, who made some late gains in race one. Kevin Smith starts P39 for Verano Motorsport, joined in the company of Sam Bernals for Goldwyn Motorsport, completes your top 40. And it's going to be Roy Plummer for next gen, who starts P41 ahead of Jack Bolton for Grant Motorsport. With Riley Sheridan's virtual reality Autosports Honda having been fully repaired, and he'll be looking to try and get a little bit further up the order in this second race, as will Mark Redford with that dramatic end to his race one after almost on course to finish inside the top 20. Swamami Dravoski starts P45 for Semper Race and a Daniel Danning for Goldwing Motorsport. And then Pierre Torczegoslowski starts P47 on what is a penultimate row of the grid alongside Matthew Addy of the Semper Racing Driver ahead of the Next Gen Racing Driver. And then it will be Andrew Holmes who starts with the final row of the grid for Next Gen with Lee Horn not making it to the grid due to technical issues with the car. Andrew Holmes will be starting P49 having missed race one. He's got it all to do from the back of the field. But as all of our drivers get themselves set and practically everybody is now on the grid well the race lights will be going on short and when they do, we've got 11 laps of racing to go, and it's going to be absolutely incredible. As we do have a brief moment there, we lose Joe Zidol from the front of the grid, but I think he's now returned to the car, and all the lights are on. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It is going to be for race number two, 11 laps, and we go underway. One red light, two red lights, three red lights, four red lights, five red lights. And it's lights out and away we go for our second race today. And at a distance, Joe Zidoa looks to get a good start. But further down the order, you can see their progress being made already by Wiz Patrick Falcon as they roar their way out to speed. Boy, Chicks Weirdo H cutting to the outside. They're taking a little bit of grass with him as they all make their way through. Jack Jeffries on the inside as they head in towards Coma Grande. The road will slightly narrow here as they make their way with the road service transition. Jeffries there on the inside, fending hard, fighting hard. He's three wide into the apex. They go. And as they do, Jeffries picks off one. He picks off two. Can he make it all the way through? It looks like he can here. The Hyundai Elantra's nose is slightly ahead, but will he be able to convert it into position now on the outside here down to the chicane? On to the brakes, it's still three wide as they come on down. Swirdoach is not backing out the Semp Racing driver as they go free of course, free of press, and they all survive it. It's absolutely fantastic racing as they come in towards the first of two lesbos. All the field romping its way on through, and compared to race number one, I think everyone's got rid of the red shades on their visors, and they've calmed it down because it's absolutely fantastic. A run wide there, one way it's one of the Irish Esports cars coming back on that's Nick Clemens but they've all slide the opening couple of quarters and Mikey Doe will back side by side here Mike Wiz at Krems Noon for P21 the organisation driver find himself having to fight hard with a three time champion already so they make the way down Sarah Galeo but they head all the way down roaring their way in towards what will be turn number six very shortly further back Mark Kent and Kieran Smart Kent has made some major gains at the start of this race Kieran Smart has fallen back Kent on the inside here burst by Alan McCain this is important for Wiz and P2 it's gone wrong in front however 
Oh, the Kent's on the wrong line, and as a result, it's the slam on the brakes, and well, further contact there, and that's the Ace of Spades car, Shane Piggott being turned sideways, misses the barrier, but it's taken to the gravel, and they all survive that just about, but from then, we look back into the top ten as they all come down towards Warby Parabolica Curve, and Isaac Doe was up the inside there. Oh, that was Patrick Falcon are trying to gain the place. And at long last, finds a way to get it done. But Patrick Falcon has gained two places since the start of this race as they make their way onto the start finish line straight and well, this is how they line up after what is one lap of racing it is Joseph Doble who leads ahead of Alex Merritt if you're prime leader P2 followed by Jack Jeffries P3 Voitrick Spirito HP4 Luciano Bitford P5 Patrick Falcon of P6 Isaac Dole P7 Benjamin McCluskey P8 Kieran Sharp P9 Garen Gunner P10 Adam Delman P11 and then Adam McNally your second place prime driver Nick Clemens having it off on the open lap we're not quite sure what happened we saw the aftermath which is where he rejoined on the run out of Les Mo one, but I think there's a bit more to the story than that for Clippins, and we'll try and get a replay of that when we can, but point being right now as we focus on what's on our camera, Adam McNally is your second place bun driver, coming to the wall in the rear of the picture, and that is Stuart Wyness, and the cop comes back across the road, it's pitched and it's stopped, everyone take the race of action, I think there one of the JW Motorsport cars went careening into the scene incident, I think that might have been Reece Watt, and it is, Reece Watt has lost the front end of the car, and as he tries to get it stopped, it's gone very, very wrong for Reece Watt, and I believe Mitchell West may have also got caught in the carnage, as they've come on through, William West has gone long over the, what is the Escang Road at the Chicane, and Kevin Smith right now fighting with Wayne Douglas as they make the way in towards the Lesmos, but as they come in towards Lesmo 1, you can see there Wayne Douglas's car missing its front bumper, that's definitely been in the wars of the car but looking from outside the top 20 back into it, here we go with Nick Clemens right now, he's got to try and recover his way, but remember he's carrying what's the best part of 40 kilograms of success ballast in that car it's not standard weight for Brian Gunnar's third place finish in race number 1, and there he gets his elbows out, Luke Jones made to run wide and well Jones won't be very happy that as Mark Sykes meanwhile looks up the inside meanwile here comes Ben Altria and the Am leader right now finds himself free of Brest here Altria on one side Doble on another and it's going to be four wide almost they come on down now here comes Mikey Doble looking around the outside as Jones hasn't got the overspeed here he's going to have to wait and will they all continue to hustle and bustle but in the end it is going to be Doble goes around the outside of Sykes and will go through the right hander and all the way up towards what will be the start of the finish line and Mikey Doble continues to make progress there's no weight in the car for what he is the double sim racing drive, so we can make this progress early on. But meanwhile, we look back towards the top three, and Vitrix Rudich, here he comes. We were wondering how long it'd be before he'd be looking for the lead. And well, here's your answer as he goes on to lap number three. He takes one, he takes two, in towards Cover Grande they go, and as they do, the Audi right now with less weight in the car, and you can see already the number eight is absolutely flying out there as he heads up towards. Excuse me, turn number two, and as he does so, Josie Double looking around the outside, and well, right now, not able to find the move. Or once the anchors, they go hard and fast. Luciano Fitford still looking for an opportunity here, and the world of racing driver just has not been able to find the places that some of his rivals have, but to be fair, if he takes back-to-back full-place finishes, he's going to be on course of the lion's share of points today, and this could really shape up to be one of the best results of the season so far for him, indeed, out of any drivers. We're only two rounds in, to be fair, but consistency this early on goes a long way in the next TCC as we see from season to season as he comes out to Lesmo 2 the sun is starting to shine once again and right now as they made the way down Patrick Falcon is still in the mix and Jack Jeffries as well in the fact he's not really gained or lost he's still P5 it's where he started and right now the Red Grove Project driver absolutely keeping his head down with Patrick Falcon are right behind him and Falcon are watching on and waiting in the wings and looking for an opportunity here you can see Jeffries really on the offensive as we ride on board with the Red Grove Project driver looking for to go on the attack and was Merritt goes defensive on the inside. Alex Merritt trying to hold on for what the back-to-back overall podiums. But remember, he doesn't have to fight for this. He doesn't gain anything out of it. And it's only pride on the line here and technically overall points. But then again, what's the more important championship is the question. Well, there you can see the answer as he steps aside. And Vivid looks up the inside. Jeffries comes up through as well. I think Meredith recognising he's going to pop a bit of a fight. He's not just going to roll over. But at the same time, he's not going to give it as much fight as he was prime drives around him for the simple reason. He can gain overall points, but that's not the championship he wants this season. He made that clear in his post-race interview at Silverstone. And as they made the way down the start for the straight car coming out the pits, that's Reese Wild to his repair where all drives will stay to the left-hand side here. Nine the pit exit line as they make the way on down to towards what is the non-in-new chicane as they head up towards Cover Grande then. We're side by side here with Jeff Reeves versus Midford and Midford right now on the outside. This is going to make it harder for the two to carry the speed as Joseph Double now second clear. And as they make the way to the gantry board here, you can see your race leaders coming through. It's Wiradoch pulling away slightly. On 
the brakes they go and all very quickly onto the anchors and will go in line astern now as they make the way from left into right here a little bit of argy bargy as we do see some contact between was Gardner onto the rear and Kieran Sharp by looks things but the sim racing collective driver still holding on well in the 199 for ways P9 and enjoying a happy race so far as he makes his way on through the first of the two Lesmos but meanwhile further down the order well we talked about this man how quickly would he cut his way through the field you're right on board with Kieran Sharp looking down Kieran Smart I should say over the top of the track Scotland car car running wide in front of three swap respect to the blue flags I think mean, also opting with the runway just to use it has plenty of opportunity to steer clear of all the drives on the lead lap but right now the focus of attention is the 39 Elantra as he looks for an opportunity to pass Luke Jones around the outside he's chasing down Mark Sykes Sykes is two places in front Smart wants to make that one less place as he heads in towards the braking zone can't quite find it here as the 39 driver literally hugs the rear bumper of Jones all the way through they go and as they do up with the wall that will be the parabolic curve and well Jones has got to make a call does he go inside or outside he's going to go inside and well Smart so close you can reach out touch the rear wing of that Veloster but Smart's going to look around the outside here as it's a drag race into the braking zone they go what's it going to be for Smart will he go around the outside he commits to it he doesn't back out and then he comes all the way round well right now Jones will know that Elantra's going to have the legs when he gets to fifth gear he's got a slightly better top end but by comparison it's where the Veloster accelerates better in the lower gears that keeps him front but it's a long run down the start finish straight nothing between these two and Smart right now absolutely galvanised after what he'll feel as though he was robbed of an opportunity to attack Sykes on the last lap of race one and right now he's trying to make amends for that as they head in towards turn number one once again side by side on the outside this time in towards Coma Grande and Will Jones here starting to feel that's where he's feeling the pinch of the top gear the velocity just doesn't have the speed and Will Smart right now looking for the move he can't find it and the Am driver absolutely on fine form with Prime Sam Vidal's behind it look for that P6 in Prime class of a Jones and I think you'd bite your hand off if you said it's coming his way but looks things they made the way on through the chicane as they make the way on through. Jones getting slightly wrong there and that's going to give an opportunity to Smart. Smart looking up the inside in towards Lesbo 1 and going for the move and well I think this is going to be only going one way and it is Kieran Smart takes P20 and now looks to chase after Alan McCain. McCain's the best part of what is 1.7 seconds up the road and if he can find that he'll have plenty of opportunity to go on the offensive and then try and take the place of what we Mark Sykes the win in the pardon me the AM class and we'll, we'll have to see whether he can make that a reality but still there's a way to go as they make the way in towards what will be at turn number six and from then from this battle we look back to what is the bottom end of the top ten and here's the fight for tenth place Gavin Gardner right now all over the back of Alex Meredith who's gradually being bumped by pros left right and centre but then again I think Meredith at this point just trying to take the approach of which I don't need to fight the pro ams or he's got to be careful because Adam McNally's only two places behind and Gardner right now keeping Adam Delman behind the SRL with next gen driver has got McNally a little bit closer this time round and well, I think Delman here would like to try and work with his teammate behind to try and gain both of them some places as they make their way down the start finish straight if you're wondering why drivers are not going beyond the white line there on the inside towards the pit wall they have been told if they put all four wheels beyond that white line it will be a penalty and the track stewards are looking out for that today but it's going to be free wide move on well, this is something they'll be looking out for in glee and hoping it all went cleanly as they make the one down and where it's going to be reverse moses here for what will be gardner and delman both going around the outside and meredith into turn one and in the end meredith right now staying with there's a bit of rub meredith's going to go slightly to the cross there i think he catches the car in time he does a flash of lights there meredith i think seen his old race flash before his eyes but meanwhile behind adam and nally now is a clear opportunity to go on the attack here for what could be the leader of the prime class he's got jamie dory right behind and dory can he find a way to get involved will be Doyle's got the pressure here of Mikey Doble behind and Doble's already up to P14 with half this race to go as they make the way through the right hander and up towards what will be turn at number five as they head in towards Lesmo 2 and coming through the right hander right now it could not be close between these two the two champions of the overall championships indeed they share all the titles between them and right now it's friends foes whatever you want to refer to them but at the end of the day great race to unfold between them but as they make the way in towards Ascari well again you can see Adam and Ali they're taking a sneak peek up the inside of Meredith he can't quite find it and well as he tries to look for that opportunity a bit further down the order we've got Daniel Downing looking to try and make a recovery drive here for Goldwyn Motorsport 
as he chased after Shane Bigger. This is for the final point of position in the prime class as they fight for P15 in class. Downing on the attack, picking up the defender here, and the Ace of Spades racing a Veloster, looking quite comfortable under break. And there you can see the length he can take under break in by comparison with Downing. And in terms of the fact Downing there breaking about five metres earlier, he will have the toe to offset with the fact he's got the slipstream or the draft of about six cars in front of him compared to what we won less for Pigger, but as well, just not as much confidence in the brakes there. And more in return now, Jocelyn Collins behind the sixth place Amdro looking to stay with this pack and give himself an opportunity. But here comes Jack Bolt up the inside of Matthew Addy. Addy there squeezing. Here's a fellow countryman to the inside. And well, I think the next gen driver would argue, well, that's a lunch from too far back. You're not going to make that happen. And right now, the triple seven driver, hoping the numbers will bring him luck. He's holding on to P11 in the prime class. But he's got Bolton closing. And Jack Bolton right now, absolutely on a charge here. And he makes land down in the Honda Civic, looking for another place. Matthew Sheraton will be the next driver up the road. 1.4 seconds clear. You can see there the Aztec Racing Audi. And here comes Bolton once again, looking up to the inside as they go in towards that right-hander. And well, as they do, can he find the move here? I think he can initially. But remember, the Honda's now out of the toe. This is where he's going to start to fill the pinch of this top end. But Addy, in turn, not quite carrying the speed. He needs on that outside line. He's going to look back to the outside here. Under break, he'll pin Bolton to the inside in towards Regia. And as they head in towards the left, into the right, here goes Addy. Bolton still there, squeezing slightly. It's just enough room given. And once well, they both get squirrely, here comes Jaworski, who's going to make it free, winding towards the break. He's over Lesbo one. He takes one. He's going to go for both of them here. And with the two one special but can he bring it to the checkout I think he can or can he as they go three way down to Lesbo too and you don't see this they all squeeze on in and Bolton goes around the outside of the pair of them that's as brave as it comes contact there between Andrew Holmes and the rear of Matthew Addy Addy is turned to the wall and Monza bites back on Matthew Addy once again as meanwhile Andrew Holmes going slow there against the barrier that contact Matthew Addy I think has completely taken the steam out of the next gen racing drivers race and I think it's caused damage to have to cause him to tow to the pit but with his last it's up Others gains and Harley Bicknell making its way up towards the inside of what is turn number seven. And well, right now, the JW Motorsport driver absolutely on the attack here versus Daniel Day. He's got Jonathan Collins right behind him. And well, Collins looking strong just by as they make the way down the start, finish straight. But let's also remember there's still plenty of battling going on further up the field, including a driver who many of you are cheering on today. And well, we're not forgetting about the fans of World of Racing's Luciano Bigfoot here as he's moved up to P2 over the last lap in a three way fight with Patrick Falcon and Jack Jeffrey. And here comes Falcon up the inside of the Audi with the overspeed of the toe as they make the way to lap number eight through the right hand and they go. And as they do, Jeffrey's right now watching, waiting, looking for an opportunity. I mean, you've got to be patient here, but in this fight, because we do have Boy Chicks Widow, which is already two seconds clear and has broke away. But, but there on the inside, defending a bit of contact on the braking, but the world of racing drive manages to get away with it. And as they make the way out of where it turns two and three, we ride on board and look back from the rear of the 60. And we're right now the Veloster driver. If he knows he can't win, he's going to do everything in his power to make sure this P2 comes to him. And it'll be progress from P4 in race number one as he heads in towards Lesmo 2. He's got Riley Shannon in front of him, a lap down to Sheridan right now. Steers clear. I do believe, in fact, takes to the gravel there with the blue flags waving. He's going to take him some time to let the whole field through. But as all the drives come through, it could get a much better exit. And that keeps him safe for now as they make the way on down towards the Scari. But as they do from the drivers, meanwhile, Adam and Nally has fallen a bit. Oh, in fact, Adam and Nally has moved his way up the order. And what exactly has happened to what is Alex Merritt, if I hear you ask, in terms of your prime leader? Well, this is how the move was made by Adam and Nally for the lead of the prime class. As we look to the replay here, it was a drag race down towards turn at number one with Meredith on the outside, Manali on the inside. And with the Honda driver here being pushed along as well by Jamie Dory, who was trying to stick there with Mikey Doval. And as they made the way into the right hand, uh, there was space to be afforded to both drivers. And well, how did it all win? Perhaps the big question. I get the feeling is going to be on the inside here. In towards Regina. So he didn't give up. But as they made the way for the left into right, contact there. Meredith slightly edge wide, and Manali in contact. Brings the car back together. It was still free wide into Lesmo 1. And well, Meredith at this point on the outside in the worst possible place he can be. I don't know how Manali survived that, but that's testament to his car control. And well, they were still fighting down to Lesmo 2. But at this point, with Dory on his inside and Meredith, I think, just being squeezed out slightly there at what was Lesmo 2. And that's how he lost the places. And that is why Adam Manali is now your late race leader in the prime class. As we have returned to your live race in action, ladies and gentlemen, well, Ben Altria also found 
find his way past Alex Medev and we return just as Alan McCain's now looking for his way past the prime driver who took the class win in race number one and well keep in mind of course that Meredith is running 48 kilograms of success from success ballast in that car so in the battle of the two Elantras here with McCain having very little weight in the car by comparison if any at all you can definitely see the difference in straight line speed flash of lights there from McCain trying to distract Meredith by looking to head into Lesmos but he's not going to let that distract him whatsoever and meanwhile behind them we have had a move for the lead Excuse me, off with the AM class, and Kieran Smart has taken the AM lead off of Mark Sykes as they make the way through Lesmo number two. And well, we'll have a replay very shortly to explain how exactly the move was made as they made the way down the Seraglio and as they head all the way up towards what will be Ascari. Well, Smart now looking for the opportunity on Van Olsen. Remember, it's a top 23 that are eligible for the reverse grid positions. Anywhere between P13 and P23 can be drawn from the lottery bowl. So right now, both Smart and Sykes will want to stay inside the top 23 and they'll want to get as high as possible to give themselves an opportunity to potentially be on the front couple of rows of the grid in the AM class should the highest numbers be drawn and well if so that would be absolutely incredible for them it'd be a huge opportunity but as they make the way on and down towards turn number nine making the way on through we take a look back at what exactly happened to Kieran Smart versus Mark Sykes so as we look to the replay, making the way out of the final corner, it was a better run for Smart. And Sykes looks as though he may have caught himself up on the apex and had to slow the car down to a degree. And with the toe afforded to Smart off of the back of what was the car in Nick Clemens, well, Sam Van Olsen also had the overspeed in the Audi and he's going to surge on through. But Smart making the move count there by simply picking up the speed at the right time. Is return to your live racing pitch as we have got with two more laps of races to go, ladies and gentlemen. As we do sell on the Twitch chat there to Danny Daniels244, and one of the drivers make the way on down towards turn at number one, making the way towards the braking zone here for turn two. Right now, McCain under pressure from Alex Meredith once again. Meredith trying to come back here. He's got the overspeed, but the weight in the car is holding him at bay, it would seem, as they head on down towards the braking zone. Well, two, they get too wide, they go in towards the first chicane. How will they emerge? Well, it's going to be a squeeze there. Sam Van Oles tries to elbow his way on through. He does so and Nick Clemens losing out there and here comes Kieran Smart as well to pick up the place of the Clemens. Sykes not close enough to be able to do so. Meanwhile out in front we do see that Isaac Doe has found his way past Jack Jeffries and also losing over Bitfer and Patrick Falconer as they come out of what has turned number five coming out of Lesmo two and Isaac Doe right now back in form after what has fallen back to P5 but again you can see these drivers all literally hustling and bustling behind one of them all looking for an opportunity as Bitfer on the inside here fighting with Jeffries and the breaking into Ascari, a bit of contact between the two and Jeffries meanwhile rejoins. Bitford lets him rejoin it on the inside of turn seven. But as both drivers go side by side through the exit of Ascari, where he's going to be. Where's a flash of lights there from Jack Jeffries? He's not happy with that. But it wouldn't be touring car if there weren't contact. And as they make the way in towards turn number nine, well, right now Jeffries falling back to P8. He's got Mikey Dole behind him. Gavin Gone looking around the outside. We well, finds himself between a rocket of our place here, and he's going to find it even harder as they come on through. What is the final corner for? It's the penultimate time. One more lap to go here and right now it could not be close as Luciano Bitford tries to hold on to P3 Kieran Sharpen is inside and white flag waves as they head on down well, of course our tries all having to stay within the white line confines of this circuit and it's going to be a drag race here all the way through but Patrick Falconer says let me help you Luciano as we ride aboard here with the JW Motorsport drivers he tries to give the push and was they head on down here you can see just how close he is in the fact running on that rear bumper but looking back to the exterior pictures here in towards turn one they go Jeffrey's behind right now still warning back a little bit further as McCluskey looks to go around his outside and will they all head up towards the Regier chicane who now is going to be the bravest of the brakes here he's going to get messy but looks like he's on the break here but hopefully he keeps it clean and will they do it in the end as Mikey Doe looks around outside to inside Jeffries there on the outside runs to the gravel when well, in the end there wasn't enough space for both of them and Mikey Doe makes his way on through I think Jeffries there a bit incensed he's going to be incensed even more now as up the inside goes both Adam Delman and Jamie Dory through Lesbo 1 He's still there on the inside, and right now the number 13 driver still insisting he's got the right to the space in Lesbo 2, but there's not enough space. And Jeffries holds on to P10 as the queue of cars continues to come up behind Adam McNally. Has got Ben Trier right behind him in this long lolly gaggle of cars as well. And right now, it's anyone's guess where it's going to be McNally or Drew who takes the prime win in the second race of the day with Alan McCain three seconds behind in the rear of your picture with Alex Meredith falling slowly and slowly further back as they head in towards Ascari. You can see that Joseph Doe will not pull any punches holding on around the outside into Ascari but from them, as they make the way on down the final major stretch, here is your race leader, ladies and gentlemen and will lead it by a comfortable five seconds right now. He makes his way in towards the final corner and will after what was a difficult race number one which he managed to finish 
inside the top 10 for in race number two. It's a return to winning form and the Voidchicks were died. The Cheggle flag waves as the Semper Racing Drive takes the win here in race number two at Monza by 5.2 seconds over Isaac Doe will hold on to P2. Luciano Vitford comes home on the podium. P3 for World of Race. This first podium of the season ahead of Patrick Falconer and Kieran Sharp with Benjamin McCluskey, Mikey Doe, Gavin Garner, Adam Doe and Jack Jeffries complete your top 10 and Adam McNally takes P14. It was literally a photo finish at the line but by half a tenth the SRO and next gen goal driver P14 overall takes what is the prime win and meanwhile Kieran Smart is going to be your AM winner in the second race of the day. Lichel with Mark Sykes by two tenths to the finish line with Mark Kent completing the run to P3 on the AM podium in P23. Goodness me it has been an absolutely incredible race number two. We still got drivers to finish however Let's not forget that we're including Wayne Douglas P34, head of Pietro Gigaslewski and Sam Smith P35, P36. Mark Redford will come through for P37. And then it will be Salomir Travoski ahead of Mitchell West and Craig Tillerson, who then comes on around here for P40, P7 in the AM class of Fusion Racing in another solid drive for his second race of today. And then it'll be 11 seconds to Kevin Smith, who after a couple of mid-race incidents that we didn't quite catch on camera, he brings it on home in a P8 in the AM class. Lost a couple of places compared to where he started, but the key point in his mind will be that he's still got some good points on the board and there's still the question of race number three. But then from him, Matthew Addy, after that contact with Andrew Holmes, really cost him dear. And the next-gen driver not having any luck at Monza so far. He'll be hoping for a miracle in race number three that things do go his way. And will the Englishman cross the line P42 today in number two of our races? And then Stuart Wynes will be your last lead lap finisher for Track Scotland after what's looking to be a strong start to this race. Early contact puts him all the way down the order. And the Track Scotland driver taking P43 or P21 in a Pro-Am. But as all the drivers make the way on around here, and Wojciech's weird out celebrating their side-to-side -side flash of lights of separation. He's absolutely pleased with his result, no doubt about it. And Isaac Doval hurry into the pit lane there to celebrate for Doval Sim Racing. And well, Luciano Vitford bringing on home that podium. He was spoiled a bit in race number one, but in race number two, he's made it count and did it the hard way. But this is a very insistent JW Motorsport machine of Patrick Falconer and Jack Jeffries, who may have finished P10, but let's not forget, for the majority of the race, he was contesting the podium for Red Grove Projects. Adam McNally as well, his first win of the season in the Prime Class. And what a result there for the SL Next Gen Gold Driver as he heads on down pit row. And Ben Altria just behind him by under half a tenth in the end, as I've had it updated to me. The full tilt we most, which I just missed out, and Alan McCain with him. Kieran Smart and Mark Sykes already finished their races. And well, as our drivers all make the way into the pits, let's take you for those race results subject to Eddie Stewart's inquiries. And after an absolutely mm. thrilling race number two, no safety cars as well, which is always a bonus at Monza, ladies and gentlemen. When round two, race number two of season six of the NXTCC powered by IMB Racewear, Wojciech Swerdowicz returning to the top step for Semper Racing by 5.2 seconds over Isaac Dobel. And the Dobel Sim Racing driver there, keeping at 1.3 seconds clear of Luciano Vitford, the world of racing driver, completing what was your overall podium, an all pro overall podium at this time around. Behind the Dutchman, the Englishman at JW Motorsports, Patrick Falcon with Kieran Sharp P5 there for the Sim Racing Collective and we'll just off him at Benjamin McCluskey P6 for Next Gen Pink three tenths clear of Mikey Doble who fought his way through from a P23 start to P7 and the Doble Sim Racing Drive being followed up by Next Gen Pink's Gavin Gardner Adam Delman for SRO and Next Gen Gold and Jack Jeffries for Red Grove Projects an unfortunate end to his race in terms of where he finished but still taking a lot of positives from at races 1 and 2 and we look forward to more from him in race number 3 Best of SP11 was Jamie Dory for Next Gen Pink ahead of Joe Doe and Andrew Pike with a pro lineage of cars, ending with the Pro-Am there of Adam McNally, P14 overall and Pro-Am winner for SRO and Next Gen Gold. And he held off Ben Altria to the line as it's been updated by a tenth for the full tilt motorsport driver and Alan McCain for Iris Esports, a further two and a half seconds behind it, round off the prime podium. Alex Meredith, P17, full place in the class. And whilst he may not have taken the win, I think he'll be happy with that full place in class given the weight he was carrying. And Nick Clemens there for Iris Esports, round off the prime top five. With then Sam and Oles, P19 for Gold Wing Motorsport and Kieran Smart completing a top 20 overall. And most importantly for the AM driver, the AM class win for Track Scotland. Redemption after what happened at the end of race number one. Mark Sykes will take that P2 in the AM class happily and will the next gen driver there ahead of Luke Jones of JW Motorsport and Mark Kent the full tilt Motorsport driver completing the AM podium of Smart Sykes and Kent with Marcel Fritch and Matthew Sheraton completing your top 25.
Duncan Ryan's P26 had a Gabriel Yilmaz. Full place in the Amcloth for the Aztec race. Dry ahead of Jack Bolton for Grant Motorsport. And then we can see completing your top 30, Harley Bicknell and Daniel Downing. With Jonathan Collins, P31, and another good set of points for the Whiskey Runner Racing Driver. And at Akram's Noon, Wayne Douglas, Piotr Jagoslewski, and Sam Smith. And then to complete your top 40, it was Mark Redford ahead of Slovomir Travoski with Mitchell SP at 38, and then Craig Tillerson and Kevin Smith. Shane Piggott, P41, the Ace of Spades racing driver, having an instant late on the race that cost him quite dear and put him out of the top 25. As we can see from him, Matthew Addy at P42 ahead of Stuart Wyness. And well, he was your last lead lap finish for Track Scotland with a lap down to Reese Watt, Andrew Holmes, Riley Sheringham, James Spencer Scout, Roy Plummer. And we do say hello to Super Riley 10 or Riley Sheringham in the YouTube chat, I do believe. And from Roy Plummer, a lap down. We also did have Darren Ills, who retired seven laps in the end for Ace of Spades racing and will there be class therefore be classified as a non finisher as he did not complete over half the race distance. So 49 starters, 48 finishers, of which 40 on the lead lap and well ladies and gentlemen we still got one more race to go another 11 laps of racing await us with race number three just around the corner but of course there's one big question that we've got to answer and it is as simple as this who is going to be your reverse grid pole sitter? Well, as we cut to the commentary booth and welcome it to you guys and girls at home, as we have in front of us here, is the next gen racing lottery bowl. And shortly we're going to be shuffling it and drawing the numbers out of the bowl between six and six and 12 they are. We're going to close our eyes as we do so. And well, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get this reverse grid draw underway. So there's the shuffle. And now we draw our first ball out of the bowl. And it is going to be the number eight. So we're going to have a relatively sizable reverse grid for our final race of the day. But what's it going to be joined with is the question. We close our eyes, do another shuffle and draw. And without further ado, joining the number eight tonight will be the number 10. So it means we will have a top 18 reverse grid. So it's going to be Nick Clibbins who starts on pole position for the final race of the day and he will be joined on that front row by Alex Meredith. Well, if you wanted to see a top five of Pro-Ams line up on the front rows of the grid, we've got it once again, much like what we saw at Silverstone National, but will it be a Pro-Am who takes the overall win or could we see our pros fight the way through? Well, we'll have to wait and see and we will be back for all that and more, ladies and gentlemen, the build up to race number three in approximately what will be at seven to eight minutes time don't go anywhere because if you've enjoyed race one and you've enjoyed race two even more you're absolutely going to love race number three so we'll see you shortly and indeed as we cut away we'll cut to a word from our sponsor for this season and that is imb racewear
Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we return then for our final race of the day in round two of the NXTCC Season 6, powered by IMB Racewear, and well, brought to you on iRacing. And as our drives get set for one last race at the Italian Tempo Speed, that is the Monza Grand Prix circuit, minus its first chicane. Well, there's change of foot in the field, and it's not just about our drives, but out there at the moment getting themselves set for the final race, because we have had a little bit of a correction with regards to the broadcast. And we do need to say thank you in the YouTube chat to Smags660. I do believe that's James Smags, but James Smags says Gal, who has pointed this out with the fact that Kieran Smart was listed as AM on the broadcast, albeit listed as Pro Am in the session which a driver raced in. And we have just double checked with regards to the standings and whatnot. And it would seem that in fact Kieran Smart is racing in the Pro Am class. So good spot there, James. And that does mean that in fact that whilst we've been saying that Kieran Smart has been your AM winner for race number two, in fact, it was not an AM win for him, but instead what was a P7 finish in the Prime class, and well, Mark Sykes has happened to make it two wins out of two in the AM class, and has one more race to go. So we do apologise for that. A slight class reshuffle, as I'm to understand it since round number one, because looking back on the statistics tables that we saw earlier, we actually did see Smart listed as pro. But all these little things do happen, of course, in the early stages of the season. We do see some class shuffling and well as of round number three we'll hopefully get it absolutely spot on but we could see some more class shuffling between what is round number two and round number three of course we find those the classes after round number three but as our drives get themselves all set and ready to go we've got one and a half minutes left on the clock here and well our drives haven't got too long in this final practice warm-up session to get themselves clocked in at once again fully dialed in and well after this it's going to be the final race today and we do have one thing we are certain of is a top 18 at reverse grid and what the front of it is going to be none other than Nick Lewins who right now I think the IRC Sports driver will be feeling as though all the pressure is going to be on at the front of the field but we're also going to have the likes of Adam McNally right up there the SRL with next gen gold driver now there's a great opportunity for him to make some progress up through the field and we also do have Shane Pigger the Ace of Spades racing driver you can never count him out but he'll be starting much further down the order after a difficult race number two but we're going to get ready to see whether he can carve his way up through the field and the spirit there being embodied the Rhino Motorsport so here we go for another race of fun and chaos in the YouTube chat and indeed spot on there Rhino Motorsport we do say hello to Kieran Spot there in the YouTube chat who's saying that he does think he was a bit of a wolf in sheep's clothing with regards to being called an am by looks of things and with so many of you enjoyed at race number two as we also say, Lee, say hello in the Facebook chat to Lee Horn there. Frustratingly, his potentiometer has broken his accelerator pedal, so no racing for him until he gets a new one fitted. And we're well, sorry to hear that, Lee, but glad to have you tuning in. But we miss seeing you on the grid, no doubt about it. And we're well, speaking of that grid, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It is time for us to head to the grid for our final race of the day, race three of three in this round of racing here at Monza. And who will be your final race winners? Let's find out. So the drivers make their way onto the grid. This is how they'll line up for the final race of the day. It is Nick, Clim Nick Clemens who takes a reverse grid pole position from a top 18 at reverse grid. He will be joined on the front row of the grid at the RAC Sports Driver by Alex Meredith for next gen who has an opportunity to try and go for a second win here today. Alan McCain starts P3 for Iris Eastwood just behind his teammate with Ben Ultra for full tilt being Motorsport on the second row P4. It's Adam McNally P5 for SL with Next Gen Gold and the run of Primes ends and it's all pros from here on. With Andrew Pike for the Sim Racing Collective P6 ahead of Joe Zidol for Double Sim Racing and Next Gen Pete's Jamie Dory completing the run to P8. The fifth row of the grid to complete your top 10 is Jack Jeffries for Red Grove Projects and Adam Dillon for SL with Next Gen Gold. Keep your eyes out for Jeffries. He's going to be looking to carve his way through it in this third race of the day after the misfortune of race number two. And and outside the top 10 on row 6 is Gavin Garner once again. He's synonymous with P11 starts today for Next Gen Pink. Head of Mikey Dole for Doble Sim Racing. We then do have on row at number 7 at Benjamin McCluskey for Next Gen Pink and Kieran Sharp for the Sim Racing Collective. Head of Patrick Falconer for JW Motorsport and World of Racing's Luciano Vitfer after his podium finish. A fantastic drive and he'll be looking for plenty more in this final race of the day. And eyes at Dole for Doble Sim Racing and Wojciech Swerdeich for Sim Racing complete your top 18. The reverse grid and Wojciech Swerdeich understandably carrying the great greatest rate with that overall win in race number two. Sam Van Ols, meanwhile, starts P19 for Goldwing Motorsport, ahead of fellow Prime driver Kieran Smart for Track Scotland, P20. They complete your top 20 on the 10th row, and then row number 11 that goes to your and pole sitter with two wins so far. Can he make it three? Next-gen races Mark Sykes and Luke Jones, P22 for JW Motorsport. 
On round number 12, it's Mark Kent for Full Tilt B Motorsport ahead of Marcel Fritz for WS Racing Esports, who continues his run up through the order. And then we'll have on row at number 13, the pairing of Matthew Sheraton for Aztec Racing and Gold Wing Motorsport's Duncan Moraes. We'll then have Gabriel Yilmaz for Aztec Racing P27, third place finish in the AM class in what was the second race of the day and he'll be looking to take on Jack Bolton who starts behind him P20 for Grand Motorsport with Harley Bicknell for JW Motorsport making gradual progress and he's got Daniel Downing joining him on the 15th Friday the good for Goldwyn Motorsport to complete your top 30. Row 16 goes to Whiskey Runner Racing's at Jonathan Collins and at Cramsonoon for the organisation and then we'll have on row number 17 Wayne Douglas for Next Gen Pink and Peter todd for Semper Racing with Sam Smith for IRAC Sports P35 ahead of Mark Redford the Privateer P36 and then we do have a Slovomir Drovoski P37 for Semper Race ahead of Mitch West performances Mitchell West who's had bad luck in both races so far hopefully that doesn't continue and then Craig Tillerson and for Fusion Racing and what will be Rado Motorsports Kevin Smith complete your top 40 on the 20th row of the grid Behind them, the Sparks will fly. It'll be Shane Pickett for Ace Spades Racing and Matthew Addy for Next Gen. And Stuart Winers for Track Scotland and Reece Watt for JW Motorsport. And then we do have what will be Andrew Holmes, who starts P45 for Next Gen ahead of Riley Sheringham for the Virtual Reality Autosports Drive, being followed up by James Smith as Gal for Aztec Racing and Roy Plummer, P48 for Next Gen. And then it will be on the final row of the grid, starting P49, Ace Spades Racing, Darren Eels, who starts 49th last but not least. And we're looking to do it all from the back of the field. Well, as all of our drivers get positioned on the grid, ladies and gents, with 49 cars will roll their way down in towards turn at number one once again. We're just waiting for one of them to get to position. That'll be Sam Smith, who starts P35, and will when they all go green flag racing. It's going to be dramatic. It's going to be a long run, but who will be leading after the final three quarters? That will be the big question. And for Nick Clemens, can he potentially make it a reality to take a win here today? Because if we sit on board, it's a long run to turn one, but can he be the one who leads it? Well, here go the lights. Let's find out as it's going to be. One red light, two red lights, three red lights, four red lights, four red lights. And it's lights out and away we go for our final race of the day. It's Clemens looks to get a good start, but Meredith immediately on the attack. Tucks in behind as the drives make away. There's a spin further down the order into the barrier already. That's why the Ace of Spades racing machines, I believe. That is Shane Pigger who's gone around. I'm not quite sure what's caused that, but they all make their way down towards turn number one. Everyone keeping it clean so far. You can see already. Everyone just in position further on down as they make the way in towards Curva Grande. Up the inside is looking at a Manali going defensive as much as defensive here. As he has an extra goal try get involved. We're all sideways from there for Andrew. Pike, who collects the car back together. Shane Pickett's had to be towed to the pits. Unfortunate start to his race, but meanwhile, the other 48 drivers all now coming into the heavy braking zone, and as they do, we're on right now safely on through and see, although it's gone very wrong with someone further back, as the car being turned, and that is Jack Bolton who's going the wrong way. I believe he's been pushed by another driver who got it wrong earlier, as everybody makes their way on through what is the Regina Chicane, and Crimson losing places left, right, and centre, and all the chaos around him. But as they all calm down, we can see that Mark Redford having a good start, and as he makes his way on towards Lesbo 1. Sadu trying to go around the outside, his fellow prime driver, as they go too wide and down in towards the braking zone, towards what will be Lesbo 2 here. But who's going to come out on top of it? Well, what is there? I do believe that's now Matthew Addy, who's picked up three places so far. He's gaining another. Zach Crimson Noon struggling. I think there's some heavy damage on that car, and that may just be causing him to lose any pace. Meanwhile, as we do look to Jack Jeffries here, looking around the outside of Joseph Doble. Starting P10 and the Red Grove Project's driver. We said watch out for him for the simple reason. He'll be looking to cut and carve his way through the order very quickly. He's doing exactly that here as he looks to try and get past Joseph Doble. Doble's still there on his outside. We will have him down at Mike Doble just behind the sun setting over the side of the circuit right now. Your leaders are in a single line formation, but here in the battle for P8, it could not be more two by two. Here they go. And will you be easily mistaken for saying this is Noah's art right now as they make the way through the final corner? And Jack Jeffrey's still holding on here after one lap race as they made the way to lap number two. But after one lap, it is Nick Clemens who leads, albeit with the pressure of what is Alex Meredith right behind the prime leaders and overall leaders. Alan McCain, P3, Adam and P4, Ben Altria, P5. That's where the prime stop. The pros begin at Andrew Pike, P6, and a Jamie Dory, P7, Joseph Dole, P8, Jack Jeffries, P9, Adam Dole, P10, and Mikey Dole, best of rest, P11, as they make the way down towards Kermit Grande for the second time of asking. And we look back for the rear of the RSE Sports leader here, as right now he looks to carve his way on through, knowing that the Honda will gradually get the advantage over time in terms of the tie degradation rate versus that of Dale Lantra but the problem is can he hold on for long enough and can he keep that gap wide enough in order to feel safe you can see that Meredith slicing his way between the curbs and the chicane and the car sliding as he does so Meredith not holding anything back here he's looking for another win to add to his collection as they make the way on through Lesbo 1 and what as they do it no change at the moment meanwhile further down the order Mark Sykes still your AM leader 
as he holds the P21, lose a couple of places at the start and then regain them. But the key point being the next gen driver here having an uneventful race as meanwhile Kieran Smart in front of him, or the pro driver here looking to battle Matthew Sheverton and the track Scotland driver looking around the outside in the run down towards the scurry. This is versus Sheverton for P6 in the prime class and Smart right now looking to make some further progress. And will the pace of this car absolutely astounded for the Scotsman as he comes on down? Will he be able to look for the move? I don't think so this time as he has to back off there. Meanwhile, just in the rear of the picture, Mark Kent looking to go up the inside of an old contact between the two Audi drivers. But also it's turned sideways. He tries to collect the car. And well, as they do, but also it's turned around. I think there was contact with Gabriel Yilmaz as part of that. And indeed, Gabriel Yilmaz, we can confirm, collected with what was the car that went waywards of Sam Bilals, And it's all gone wrong. But as they made the way on it, down towards turn number nine. Well, meanwhile, Matthew Sheraton is still trying to fend off Kieran Smart. And Sykes right now will know that Mark Kent is right behind him in the battle of the two marks. Where well, it's going to be the question of who is the bigger mark here. And right now, Kent, I feel, will feel as though he's got the right to fight for that position. But Sheraton here holding off Smart as they make their way out to lap number three. And as they careen their way down the start finish line straight. Meanwhile, further progress being made here. Or is it by what is Alex Reddit versus Nick Clemens as they head down towards turn one once again? I can see Father John in the YouTube chat cheering on Sud and absolutely pushing him on every step of the way. Meanwhile, here we have Andrew Pike in P6, still fighting with Jamie Dory, the leading pro drivers, looking for an opportunity to pick their way on and through what will be Adam and Nally next one and a half seconds up the road. But Ben Trier still waiting behind as they head on to the anchors. Be on the rear of the pitch, you can see Mikey Doble cutting up the inside of Adam Delmont, trying to follow up through Joseph Doble as he does get on the inside. Meanwhile, a bit further down, Adam Delmont, in fact, with the move being made by Mikey Doble, losing multiple places there having to avoid the apex curves, flash of lights, he's not too pleased with how that's played out and as they make the way on throw, it was Lesbo 1, we'll gather Garda right now on the outside of McCluskey, well he's got Isaac Doble for company as they head in towards what will be Lesbo 2, and well 2 does not go to 1 here, but Isaac Doble will be the one who emerges in front as they head off the corner and down Sarah Glio, but power in the way of down, and now Gavin Garda is going to have the domino effect here, which is not at the pace coming out of Lesbo 1, and Matthew Sheraton right now being pushed along by Kieran Smart behind the two prime drivers trying to work together, mutually here for a brief moment essentially to try and get past one gain some overall position and then go fight him once again but it's going to be Sheraton who does clear guard them but Smart right now still side by side but Kieran Smart whatever you throw at this man he's not afraid of taking it on that's absolutely incredible around the outside of Gavin Garner gains another place up to now P19 and Mark Sykes just by the throwing pressure of Mark Kent the battle for the AM lead could not be close as it makes its way onto your screen down towards turn number nine they go here comes Kent up the inside Sykes not really able to put a defence on right now but remember it's not about the run through turn number nine at this point in the race it's about the run down towards turn number one given the length of road they've got but will there be an intervention here as Luke Jones says can I play as well and will immediately everyone pulling over towards the inside as much as they dare to cut across that white line keeping two wheels in it and as they make the way down you see here Sykes not in the toe the Audi's fast but it's not that fast and right now the next gen drive just gradually losing some steam here but to be fair as well I think if you said to him oh, before today you're going to get two wins at the minimum of a second place in the final race today I think he would have said to you really I don't believe you but right now that belief is going to come through but you want to believe there's another win on the cards but Mark Kent's gone past Gavin Gardner he's got ahead of Luke Jones and right now Kent is just trying to break away I think Gardner's got a problem in that Veloster as he backs off there in towards the Regina Chicane. I think Gardner's nursing an issue and right now just trying to get the car on home but as they make the way on through the Regina Chicane. Meanwhile, further down the order, Wayne Douglas here looking for an opportunity passing Gabriel Yumas for P42 and will both of these drives a bit far down out of the order and out of position, particularly Wayne Douglas in the 66 as he looks to try and make the move count with the drag race between the two Audi drivers and I think eventually he will get ahead here little by little. The slight overspeed afforded in the toe as they make the way in towards turn number one albeit Yilmaz is not going to back out but Douglas does clear his rival in the end but as they clear one another meanwhile up front we do have a change of leader Nick Clemens has found his way past Alex Meredith but the question the question many of you will be asking immediately is how exactly did Nick Clemens make the move happen well we will take a look at that very shortly and I do believe the move being made by Alex Meredith. In fact, no, Alex Meredith has not made a move yet. Let's correct ourselves. We're getting ahead of ourselves here with Meredith trying to push the lead all so far. And we'll right now behind him, Alan McCain falling back. He looks like this top three have spaced out to degree by four tenths between them as they make the way out to turn number nine and on to the next lap to the fifth lap of racing in race number three. And we'll McCain just waiting here. And I think Rye Race Esports right now will just want to make it a double podium. And if they can make it a double podium overall, that will be a huge points injection the team
Teams Championship for the Prime Team. And we'll right now, when they're in a fight with teams such as Next Gen and also Full Tilt B Motorsport, they'll definitely take these points gladly as they make their way onwards towards turn at number one once again. But as all the pack make the way down, meanwhile Jack Jeffries here still being chased by Luciano Vitford. And well, the Dutchman hunting that down the Englishman, Mikey Double just in front. I think all three of these drivers right now are in a bit of a pause in their batting. All trying to close up to what is the top five pack as meanwhile Andrew Pike battling around the outside there of what is Adam and Nally into the chicane but both drivers going slow here comes Ben Altria Altria up the inside into Benali into Lesbo one as they come through the full team the most more driver seizes another place he sees an opportunity he doesn't blink twice and it's a brilliant move from the number 504 in the Elantra to make it count as he chases now Andrew Pike and Will Altria I think here he's believing he can get an overall top five and on top of that as well he can hunt down those prime leads as we see Mikey Doble all over the back here, Adam Minnelli, I think, trying to send the Morse code signal with the flash of lights, which is get a move on. I don't want to fall away from the rest of the field. And with the number one driver here having recovered from what was that absolutely awful race number one to finish well in race number two, and right now trying to gain even more places. You can understand if the Englishman is eager to try and find one or two more places before this race is all said and done. Will he be able to? Because Minnelli will not be able to be willing to keep over easily for the simple reason here, and the fact there's so many points to be gained as play in front. But meanwhile, speaking of battles, Meredith on the inside, going all in into Parabolica. And as they do, well, right now, Clemens on the outside here. The Honda's got the grip, but the Elantra's got the speed as they come off the apex and onwards they go towards lap number six. Halfway point of the race complete. Going into the second half of the race now, Jamie Dory's found his way past Alan McCain behind. It's going to be a two-way run all the way towards turn number one. Will it be Meredith? Will it be Clemens? Well, those are the questions we'll have answered as they make the way down. We look to the helicopter camera as they make the way down. But here comes Jamie Dory. He goes up the middle. The moves and maneuvers underway. And with the double drive there for the Audi RS3, you can understand why the Audi is absolutely flying on through. And in towards turn number one they go. And Jamie Dory past the seas. And boys, prime drivers. And with it takes the lead with Nick Clip is buying and Meredith in the end has to back out. But here comes McCain as they make the way onto the brakes for Regia. And as they do, McCain can't find a way and he can't help his teammate right now and Meredith is all on the attack once again as we ride on board the next gen driver gets a good run off the reduced chicane onto the inside to Lesbo one he goes and as he does so they make the way on around here past the tree line they go it's still two one as they head in towards Woody's turn at number five Meredith still down the inside he's not giving in but the problem is by being absolutely obviously he's going to take all the pace out of the race now for everybody behind him and while in doing so he takes the Toradori in the distance but is this a move too far Meredith's on the inside down so clear but I don't think he's ready to speak. You can see there, Mike is pushing him along, but McCain is now trying to go around the outside of Meredith. But will Meredith be able to hold on here? It's hard on the brakes, and well, I think the little push of Pike has just done enough here as they make the through. There's contact between them, but immediately McCain backs off there, knowing that it could be tears for the pair of them, and they don't want to lose a major result. And as they head on down towards turn number nine right now, the pro pack behind is absolutely queuing up, and with some primes mixed in as well, Trim and Nally fighting for P4 in the prime class in amongst that whole medley of cars as they make the way down towards turn number nine everyone hard on the brakes here this lead pack right now you would think they were racing in the Tour de France you know how close they are together but right now they're not racing on bikes they're racing touring cars this is the NXT as you see but such in the pace how equal they are in the toe and nobody's able to break away from one another as they make the one to lap number seven charging their way down the start finish straight and as they make the way on down meanwhile they went further down the order I can tell you that Mark Kent has found his way past Kieran Smart and right now the AM leader for Full Tilt Motorsport literally up into P20 as we speak and cuts his way ahead of Smart and carry more speed as he heads in towards turn number one and well can he find a bit more progress from Mark Sykes now the best part of what is six tenths behind him the second place and driver and as he heads in towards turn at number one it's going to be Mark Kent who holds on to his P20 for now as we up here to Czechoslovski are looking for a move here and the separation drive who started a long way down the order is now finally finding some places but there's been an instant up the road there's some smoke going up there and what exactly is happening right here you ask we're not quite sure there's Alex Manning recovering and the car's wounded is going to come across the road and it triggers a double effect there and that is both Kieran Smart and also Pietro Jigovsky who have been sent to the barrier and well that is not a good look for any of those drivers and it's a disaster but what exactly set it off is the big question we look away for a brief moment and it all goes wrong up front and well meanwhile we look back to the front and this is Pike versus Manali the two his drivers in one for Sim Racing Collector who gets head of the SRO and next gen driver he takes P3 but Nick Clemens right now 
three seconds up the road has got an open door to just run away with P2 overall and with it the prime the win potentially with what is four laps to go after this one as they make the way on down the back straight here up towards what will be turn at number nine the big question on everybody's lips right now is what on earth happened at the Regia chicane and will we have the replay ready ladies and gents but we're not going to cut to it yet for the simple reason that right now McCain and McNally are fighting it in towards turn number nine and the IRAC Esports show on the inside with Mikey Doe will try to follow him on throw me on McNally in a Honda that's definitely got some bruises in that rear bumper that might be the sign of something that happened at Regia in terms of an impact and was they make the way on down the start finish straight and we said hello there to Stokey Joe in the Twitch chat also to Handsome Stu who could we forget in the YouTube chat well, right now it's getting a bit messy a bit ugly out there but as they make the way down the start finish straight you can't fault the beauty of what is the slipstream racing in between our drivers as they head towards the opening corner and Doval looking for another way through nine and that race win overall is off in the distance it's leaving him behind and he doesn't want to be left out at all as they head in towards turn number one Car sliding a bit loose there for what was, I do believe, bike as they made the way through. And I think that's still a sign of the damage of the car as they head onto the brakes. In towards the left, into the right, they go. And as they do, we'll do, we'll look at out, inside to outside car, but it cuts back. However, it's a good move for Mikey Doe. We're here. Meanwhile, Andrew Pike's going to try and squeeze the door shut in towards Lesbo 1. But there is Mikey Doe. looks at the inside. Jack Jeffries also tries to follow up through. And as they all begin to stack up behind Doble, right now too wide, they go in towards Lesbo 2. Space being given, space being taken and neither driver wanted to give in as Jack Jeffries right now absolutely on the attack and David Brakeford asks how's Jeffries doing where well, you can see he's absolutely loving it in P6 and started P10 he's gained four places since the start and he's looking to make even more progress as it's two by two it's Hench and Bex and pick yours in front as they make their way in towards the scurry and Jeffries pushing Doble along meanwhile you can see Joseph Doble doing the same with Andrew Pike and well in here Jeffries is going to come through for P5 he gets on the inside oh what he's buying there through the second part of the scurry and meanwhile losing the rear as Adam McNally he drops down at P12 overall it's still P3 in pro -am, but it costs him multiple places overall and the points are slipping out of his grasp on the team's championship as he's been pushed on by Benjamin McCluskey in fact he's trying to push on there what is I do believe Excuse me, he's been pushed on by Kira Sharp. Let's get it right. And we'll just come in through. That's why Chick Square Dice, rear of the car coming loose, sliding his way through Parabolica. Well, it's not about the style points today. As I said, Grayson trying to have everybody go left, right, and center around him. And well, the Polish man is just going to have to hold his line. And hopefully, he's able to fit back into the battle as they make the way out to lap number nine. But as they do, it's three wide, it's four wide now. As they head on down, you can see the train on the inside as they make the way in towards turn number one. And goodness me, if it's it's going to be like this in towards the chicane very shortly. Well, they're going to need to figure out how they stagger their breaking in for the simple reason we're being this close. It could be tears as they make the way in towards Kerber Grande for the ninth time of asking in this third and final race of the day. That's where he's getting ahead there. Oh, with Patrick Falconer and the simple race trying to spike the weight of the car, the maximum balance in the Audi RS3, he's not pulling any punches, they go side by side, car running wide there, that's Joseph Doe getting wrong, but Swirl Dyche absolutely digging in, as Falcon has not given up either, the two of them side by side here, as they come down into Lesbo 1, Swirl Dyche there, meanwhile just by Kieran Sharp, still trying to fight his way clear of Adam McNally, who is refusing to give in, as they head in towards Lesbo 2, and as they come on through the right hand, that Swirl Dyche does clear Falcon, and Sharp finally gets ahead, and McNally always had to throw everything at this, but it's not over yet, as we can see here, Lucio Vitfer and Joseph Doble side by side coming down Seraclio. With what is that Adam Delman giving them a little bit of a push along the road? And as they head in towards the braking zone here, where it's going to be just behind Andrew Pike, who falls out of contention with these two right now. But at the same time, as well, I think feeling as though there's more to it than meets the eye later in the race as Lucio Vitfer reconsolidates P6 overall. We talked about a replay we've got in the instant of Regio on lap number seven, and here it is, ladies and gentlemen. And this may explain what exactly happened between a number of our drivers, our leaders, when they made to end the braking and as they came on down we initially Alex oh goodness me and that was the car of Benel Trier that got caught up in the instant Alex Meredith was a bystander who got picked up by it but what exactly happened to Benel Trier made it to down with ride on board then and into the braking zone contact from a car behind and the car sits to the barrier and he's a passenger and I think it's the SRO with next gen car of Adam McNally that may have been caught up in that and managed to steer clear and go on but Ben Trier and Alex Meredith the victims of it and then Alex Meredith on the rejoin involved in a secondary collision as a result but as we return to your live racing pictures we've still got more racing to come ladies and gentlemen and well right now we're looking back at the run for what is here Alan McCain trying to hold on to P3 versus Mikey Doe your top two have run away with this race now James 
Ferrari leads ahead of the individual prime leader. But Mikey Dell getting ahead there of Alan McCain. I think McCain at this point is just focusing on getting the car home and is less concerned about what will be the oval points and also what will be the team's championship points if he loses a couple. I mean, well, it's not over yet if you're battling for what is P7. And this is where Chicks Ridge up the inside of what is Joseph Doble for aforementioned position. As behind me, what Andrew Pye and also what is Luciano Vip and Patrick Falcon are all getting the mix. Swear Dyke here being firm on the inside into Lesbo 2. He does still love going for the moves there. And what well, you can tell is the fact that Audi's got so much torque in the low end. And that's given him the ability just to be able to hold on these runs. Even though he's got all the weight in the car, he manages to get the exit. As they head on down the Seraglio straight in towards Ascari. Well, right now, Spiridion Chia has got Joseph Dole around the outside under braking. Dole goes for it. It's a nice move from Joseph Dole. Spiridion Chia now, I think, missed his braking, but I think he broke too early. In the fact, you could see that under braking. Joseph Dole was able to brake about 25 metres later, almost, it would seem. But then again, Spiridion Chia right now might just be consolidating the positions and thinking more about the final lap. And the fact he wants to go on the attack, he wants to actually be behind Dole going on to the final lap of race to make the move. But man, well, in the fight for P3 in the prime class, will Matthew Sheridan hold on to that position at Weir, but Wes Isaac Dole just in front? But then the big question is who's going to be P4 in prime with Luke Jones and Adam McNally together? Mark Sykes, meanwhile, has got back ahead of Mark Kent in all of this. We're not quite sure how that's happened as the white flag waves, but I think it might be a bit of a slipstream moment as Mark Kent's fallen back to the back of this pack in P23 overall, your second place hand driver. And Sykes right now could be, of course, for three hand wins in a row tonight as they head on down the start finish straight in towards turn number one the white flag is now waving it is the final lap of racing here at the Italian Temple of Speed that is Monza and all Sykes right now free wide with Manali and Jones albeit you can see Jones in fact breaking away that is going to be Reece Watt our apologies who's also looking for the move and well I think Sykes is just trying to steer clear of the danger if he can as Doug can raise a little bit further behind battling with Andrew Holmes for Goldwyn Motorsport and well as they come down to the breaking zone now well who's going to be leading out of it Sykes gets the inside of the first part of the chicane and in the end it's a mistake there from what is Andrew Holmes who gets it wrong always on top of that I do believe Adam McNally out of sorts and Duncan Reyes does get ahead of Holmes so does Mark Kent and Reyes having to go defensive into Lesbo 1 with Kent looking around the outside for P20 can't quite find it and the South African driver of Marais for Goldwyn Motorsport makes the defence count meanwhile just behind them you can see what is the car over there Stuart White is battling with Gavin Goddard as God has sent onwards and well he's not going to be too pleased as he drops the P25 but as they make the way down Sarah Galeo meanwhile we look back to what is the battle here between Andrew White and Patrick Falconer for P10, the final top 10 vision position. And Falcon around the outside, it's Rose, but he's made it count. And as he does so, meanwhile, here's your race leaders, ladies and gentlemen, as they head in towards the final corner. And well, he's been leading for quite some time off to fight his way past Nick Clements and needs to have kept it that way ever since. And as the checker flag beckons coming out the final corner, it's going to be three different winners overall today. And Jamie Doyle will be your third and final overall winner here at Monza. He takes the win ahead of prime winner Nick Clements behind P2 there overall. And then Mikey Doble finishes on the podium ahead of Jack Jeffries. Alan McCain takes second place prime P5 overall ahead of Adam Delmont, Joseph Doyle P7. Boyd Chicks win HP ahead of Luciano Vip and Patrick Falcon. It's a complete your top 10. It's then Pike Sharp, McCluskey and Dober ahead of third place prime driver Matthew Sheraton and Mark Sykes comes up through P17 to make it three and wins in a row today. He's dominated the class in the Audi RS3 today for next gen with second place of the class going to Mark Kemp for full tilt Motorsport, four and it will be third in the AM class to James Mazesgal who brings on home a podium on the third time of trying here today and will what a day for the Aztec racing driver on his the first round of the season that he's competed in and well we still have some more drives to finish at this race let's not forget about it including Wayne Douglas who will come on home P37 for next gen pick ahead of Sam Adolf and Riley Sheringham in a drag race to line here versus Roy Plummer it's the battle of the Hondas and Sheringham despite missing the front bumper will oh goodness me it was close I think it's gone the way of Roy Plummer literally by a hair's width in fact by nine thousands it's gone to Roy Plummer to take P39 overall but for these guys in the AM class that's P6 that's gone the way of Plummer versus Sheringham Gabriel Yilmaz meanwhile P8 to the class behind P41 ahead of Craig Tillerson and then Daniel Downing Kevin Smith Mitch West and Holly Bicknell completing your finishers on the lead lap as Bicknell there P46 out of those 46 finishers with Piotr Czechoslowski and Shane P get both lap down and Alex Meredith after that instant on what was lap number seven have retiring from the race with what was five laps remaining but goodness me ladies and gentlemen what a final race of today and well as we do have Jamie Dory just making his way on down 
the final stretch in towards turn number nine. On the next gen pink drive, bringing on the home what has been a win, hard crafted and hard earned. And will Nick Clemens, the prime winner, a little bit further behind there? He'll be absolutely pleased to have taken his first prime win of the season for IRAZ Sports. A great start to his season after Silverstone. And Mikey double round off that overall podium. And Alan McCain, meanwhile, he may have fallen a little bit further back, but nothing can deny it's a 1 2 in prime today for IRAZ Sports in this final race. And huge points as well with P2 and P5 overall. And was they all cover into the pit lane? Mark Sykes just behind there, your AM winner, triple AM winner today. And will the next gen driver? will be absolutely pleased with that and I don't think he's going to quite believe it still of course it's a long way to go in the championship but it is a good way to go in the early stage of the season as all the drivers come into the pit lane and as they do will James Spencer's gather in a bit of an altercation I think with one of his teammates in the form of what will have been I think that would have been Matthew Sheraton for third place in the AM class there and a car that's definitely worse for wear and one they're going to have to put a lot of time repairing that before they take it to the next round of racing with that, ladies and gents, that leaves only one thing, and that is to take a look at the race results subject to Eddie Stewart's inquiries, and here they are. So after another brilliant 11 laps of racing to conclude our race here today in round number two of season six of the NXTCC powered by IMB Racewear and brought to you on iRacing, Jamie Dory, your winner overall for Next Gen Pink by four tenths over your prime winner, Nick Clemens, P2 overall for iRace Esports in what was definitely a demonstration of dominance by both drivers today. After they were able to get clear of the rest of the pack, they never looked back. Mikey Dole, P3 for Double Sim Racing, fighting his way through the field and definitely it was a championship a champion's drive, you should say, today in terms of fact, it all went wrong in race one, but fought his way back through to get some major points. And Jack Jeffries, meanwhile, a huge, huge performance day to the Red Grove Project's driver. Top tens in all three races and picking up some huge points in what is only his second round of racing in the NXTCC. Alan McCain, P5 there, second place in the Prime Class, the Irish Esports driver. A great result for the team. And himself with Adam Delmont, P6 for SRO and Next Gen Gold, ahead of Joseph Doble for Doble Sim Racing. And then it was of Wojciech Swerdajic P8 for Semper Racing and once again demonstrating how strong his consistency is when he's backs up against the wall to take points in the top 10 in all three races. Luciano Vitfoot in the end falling short of what was a return to the top five, but a P9 there for the World of Racing driver. A vision all three races inside the top 10 today, two of which inside the top five and one on the podium. And then at Patrick Falcon, a P10 for JW Motorsport. And we got to see some very fine racing for the 96 driver today and long may that continue. Andrew Pipe, best of the rest, ahead of his teammate for the Sim Racing Collective, Kieran Sharp, with Benjamin McCluskey and Isaac Double completing the run to P14 and with it the run of the pros. And then at P15 going to the prime driver, Matthew Sheraton, your third place finish shot on the prime podium for Aztec Racing and completing that prime podium of Clibbins, McCain and Sheraton. Lou Jones just behind him for JW Motorsport by four attempts ahead of your AM winner for next-gen racing, your three-time winner as of today. That's Mark Sykes. And with a P17 and then at Reeswap P18 just behind him and completing your top 20 was the pair of Adam McNally and Duncan and Marais. We then see second place in the AM class to Mark Kent, p 2 for full tilt v Motorsport, missing out on taking the win away from in the battle of the two marks of Mark Sykes, but still cannot be happy with that run-up spot on the podium ahead of Andrew Holmes with Samir Dravoski and Stuart Wyness and Gavin Garner completing your run to P25. One the next-gen pink driver, Matthew Addy, who found redemption in the final race of today, gaining multiple places and started out, outside the top 40. And then we can see Mark Redford ahead of Sam Smith within the top 30 being completed by what is James Smasters Gal and Jonathan Collins. And James Smasters Gal completing the AM podium with third place in class for Aztec Racing. And that AM podium being what was Mark Sykes, Mark Kent and James Smasters Gal. P30 to Jonathan Collins, just missing out on the AM podium, but the Whiskey Runner race and driver making great progress to a P4 finish. Ahead of Jack Bolton, with Darren Nils, Marcel Fritsch, Kieran Smart, and Ben Altria completing your top 35. And that Crimson Noon P36 ahead of Wayne Douglas, with Sam Van P38. And then coming to the end of the top 40 at Riley Sheringham and Roy Plummer, with Gabriel Yumas P41 ahead of Craig Tillerson, and Daniel Downing, Kevin Smith, and Mitchell West completing your top 45. Harley Bicknell was your last finisher on the lead lap. P46 for JW Motorsport and a complete reversal of fortunes after Silverstone. And well, the big question was, was he going to emerge as an early favourite after today? And well, he's been brought right back into the pack and we'll have to see how round three plays out before we declare any favourites in the AM class. But still, he finished ahead of two drives to finish the lap down. Appears on Jacob Slevsky, the Semper Racing drive, having a lot of pace today, but unfortunately, instance getting in his way. And the same for Shane at Pigger after that instant on the start straight. 
at the start of the race and our 49th finisher albeit retiring four laps in the end but he will be classified as a race finisher as he did complete over half the race distance Alex Meredith with that unfortunate instant into what was the Virginia chicane on lap number seven for next gen so grand total 49 starters all technically finishers albeit 48 of them on what was the lead lap or one lap down and 46 on that lead lap and well ladies and gentlemen that concludes all of our racing here today at the one and only monza grand prix circuit and what a trio of races we have had and as i can see cxr racing there the youtube chat saying top races right indeed absolutely phenomenal racing and well of course we still got plenty more to go this season but that's all the racing for today's broadcast but do not fret because coming up in approximately 12 to 15 minutes time will be our post round interviews with our volunteer drivers and more ladies and gentlemen if you want to stay around and hear what our drivers have got to say about the racing today then definitely make sure to tune in and continue to tune in because you won't want to miss them we will be back in approximately 12 to 15 minutes time but until then take it easy and do let us know in your respective chat what has been your favorite moment of the race today or if you can't pick one let us know what your top three moments were and we'll see you very shortly
Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we are back for our post-round interviews with our volunteer drivers. And today, we're going to be hearing from what is three different sets of interviewees. And I say sets because we're going to be starting off with the Prime Class driver, Adam McNally, for SRL and Next Gen Gold. After what has been a strong showing today, three top 10 performances in the Prime Class, including a win in race number two. And then we're going to be coming to defending champion Mikey Dole from Double Sim Racing from the Pro Class. And definitely what has been a topsy-turvy day, but ended on a high with third place finish in race number three. And then we're going to be coming to the trio of Aztec Racing with Matthew Sheraton, James Spencer's Gout and Gabriel Yilmaz all giving their perspective on the racing today and we'll get to hear their story in due course. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's start off by hearing from none other than Adam McNally who joins me in at the interview room. Good evening to you, Adam. And Will, what a round of racing from yourself. Three top ten finishes in the prime class, including the win in race number two. Looks like you missed out on an opportunity in race number three with that late instant. But beyond that, a very strong night from yourself. Yeah, great night. Like I said, the incident race three. I'm not quite sure if it was my fault or what, but I've had a look at had a look at it a couple of times. And if it was, I'm, I'm sorry to whoever got caught up in it. But apart from that, it's been a good night racing. Oh, without a doubt. And let's start off with perhaps one of the weaker aspects of the day, albeit you could say a P2O and qualifying normally would be absolutely fantastic. But at Monza, it looked as though Slipstream was always going to be king and you put yourself practically midway in the qualifying order. How was qualifying for you? Hard. I, I couldn't really get a uh, toll up and I was, I was carrying quite a bit of weight on. Like I said, so I just had to go with it and see where I could qualify and hopefully work my way up in the race, which worked out well for us, to be fair. And just with regards to getting the toe lap in qualifying, with your teammates out there as well, it looked as though a lot of teams, including SRL with Next Gen Gold, were all trying to queue up together, at least getting a cluster to work into the toe. But of course, there's always the one or two drivers who want to sneak their way into the group and also grab the slipstream for themselves. How was it for you guys as a team out there? Because it looked as though every time you could get a good lap in, there was always going to be someone who jumped into the toe with you. Yeah, well, to be fair, we, Delmont just said, because it's such a many, so many cars on the track at the time as we leave, We'll just go and just see where we end up at the start. I mean, towards the end, we sort of did get near each other, but I just didn't get nowhere near enough time to uh, get some tall laps and some clean laps. Oh, that's absolutely fair. And I think just throwing caution to the wind and seeing where you ended up, like you say, it was perhaps the better approach compared to what other teams did out there. And then coming on to your race number one, from a P21 start, you made your way to P14 up by the finish, a P4 in the prime class as well. Despite the two incidents and the two safety cars out there, it looked like you were able to steer clear of most of the drama. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I think I got lucky twice on lap one with two cars spinning just behind us, and I think it must have scraped paint on my back bumper. And and then I think it was the first safety car that was an incident just in front of us. But apart from that, the race went great. Like I said, it was just a matter of finishing. And um, I have to ask, with regards to the Honda, we know the Honda lacks the top speed compared to its rivals around here, offset to a degree by the slipstream, but the Honda's also got the best braking potential of the cars. How does that work in this regard of the race in terms of, you know you can brake later, but you're also the slowest to get to the top speed? Oh uh, yeah, definitely. In the corners, it is a big advantage coming into the corners, but still with the quality of cars that's on and how close the cars are together, that late braking seems like not being there at the minute because if you try and out break the car beside you the next car in front's going to cut you off or there's two three cars in front of that so it's just trying to work out you're getting the run out but like you say the civic str struggles top speed Oh, indeed. And then going into race number two, starting from P14, we saw you take a P14 finish in the second race, albeit upgrading your finishing position in the class to a win. I mean, it looked tough out there batting for the win, but in the end, just merging to squeeze it on through. And your first win of the season with that. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, th I think I got one last week as well. I got a P1 finish. Oh, sorry, yes, I am right. race two. But uh, oh, it was great. I was just picking me battles and I think I got some damage towards the end so I was bit, pretty much a sitting target going down the straights. So I was just using that and once we got past the sit in the tour again hopefully I think I lost about three, four places in the last couple of laps. But apart from that, it was, like I said, it was great. P1 for in the pro-am and nice to score points. 
indeed. Some huge points scored for yourself and also some overall overall points scored for the for the SRL with Next Gen Gold team. And in going into race number three, we saw an absolutely brilliant battle at the front of the field. And it's well, for the best part of the race, it went on for a long time until the unfortunate incident. Oh yeah, like I said again, I, I don't know if I was at fault or the car beside. I feel like as I was closing in on me, sort of he was going to the right. So I looked at the left, and then it sort of looks like he sort of just moved slightly left. But if you look at the replay, he's actually driving. I'm driving straight. He's driving straight. The truck just sort of me. And as soon as we made contact, I was on the grass and couldn't stop the car. And he was backwards, couldn't stop the car. And it was just a skittle effect in the chicane. Which, like I said, I feel sorry it ruins other people's races, but it wasn't intended. Without a doubt, when it's that close to the race, it is never intentional. And well, <laughs> like you say, own up to it if it was on yourself. But we do appreciate that and appreciate your honesty all the way through. But still ending with a P6 finish. So meaning three top tens of the class and two of them at top fives, including a win. Another huge haul of points. And after two rounds of racing so far, looks as though you're only just finding your momentum. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm still clicking with a car. I started racing in another league, so I've done... 12 weeks in the car, so like it's still just a learning experience. I've got a good teammate in Delmont giving us a bit of advice on how to drive it, and it seems to be slowly clicking in the place now. It's grow gradually sinking in, and well, we've got another eight rounds to go, and in a week's time, we head down under to Australia for round three at the, sa the home of horsepower that is Sandown. How are you feeling for the Australian circuit? I've never drove there. I have actually bought a track, but I've never drove a lot, so I'll best get some practice in. Well, it sounds like <laughs> it indeed. It could be a thriller. We look forward to seeing how you get on there a week from today. But just before we do let you go, Adam, is there anybody you'd like to give a shout out or a thank you to live on the broadcast tonight? Uh, yeah, just a shout out to you guys for doing the broadcast. Everyone who sets the league up behind the scenes, does all the work, sorting the points out and everything. And everyone who turns up and makes the race and great. We do appreciate it, Adam. And at the same time, we need to say a big thank you to you for volunteering to join for a post-round interview today. Congratulations on a superb run of results. And, well, two rounds in, you're definitely looking to be one of the stronger drivers in the prime field. But will that continue when we make our way into round number three? Mm -hmm. We'll have to wait and see, and we'll see you there. Right, thank you very much. Hearing there from Adam McNally for SRL with Next Gen Gold. And what a day of racing today from Adam McNally. Enjoying the race, no doubt about it. And putting his hand up with regards to the incident he was involved in with respect to that final race. And well, if he did trigger it, apologising. But then again, when the racing's that close, incidents like that are going to happen. And like he mentioned, nobody expected it to, it, it to be intentional of any means, but it's all about hard and fast racing. But beside that negative, plenty of positives, albeit qualifying being a slight speed bump in the road, as they say, in the fact not really able to find the toe out there and instead having to craft the lap of his own device, of his own device and in the end will of his own devices I should say as I get minced on my words goodness me my apologies but as we go from mixed words to much clearer ones putting that together good enough for P21 and talking about the fact that started P8 in the class and getting lucky to find his way through the field in what was race number one and avoiding the instance particularly the open lap incidents and when in the end that luck then turned into hard graft and fortune favoring the brave as he went from a p4 starting class in race one to that winning race two and were unfortunate not to be able to make it three top fives in a row or perhaps two podiums back to back but still for adam mcnally coming out of this round as we'll see a little bit later on when we talk about the provisional standings after round number two we is now as i've just had it confirmed to me your prime provisional championship leader and well it could not be closer as the racing goes on to round number three and he's got to learn sand down but if he learns it in time will he be still leading the championship after round three we'll have to wait and see but now coming on to our second interview ladies and gentlemen and we're going to be hearing from mikey doble who gets ready to join me in the interview room and we'll be hearing the story of the number one driver who's definitely had to do things the hard way today as he gets ready to join me in the interview room and as he does so, we'll be bringing him on in with regards to the perspective of all the races today. And he joins me now. Good evening to you, Mikey. And well, what a challenging day for yourself at the Monza Circuit. A qualifying session that went absolutely brilliantly for a P5 start. 
But come the end of race number one, down in P23, but by the end of the day, two top 10 finishes and a P3 finish to complete it. I mean, as far as recovery drives go at Monza, that's pretty fantastic, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I mean, it's. I think I got the best results I could after the mishap in race one, but it still leaves the evening with a bit of a sting in the tail looking at the points and seeing that I've taken another big hit to uh, the championship leader. But but yeah, um, race one, obviously, just it's one of those races. It happens in, in this type of racing, which is obviously so close. Um, and uh, and yeah, obviously, the, the, the races to follow were aggressive drives, should we say. Oh, without a doubt. And, well, before we come to the races, talking a little bit about qualifying, I mean, Monza's always been one of those circuits whereby it's about who you have the draft off of and finding the draft at the right time. I mean, such off, we saw Akram Zanun take pole position overall as a prime driver, the first we have seen in this season. And with that in mind, P5 from yourself looked so it was a good start to the day. Yeah, solid start. I mean, we was carrying a little bit of ballast, not too much. Um, I was hoping for a little bit more, really. I just didn't really set myself up for the ultimate toe when the tyres were at their peak to to stick it on pole. Because I think we I probably had the pace to put it on pole in the car because I went a little bit quicker than pole in qualifying, sorry, in practice. But nevertheless, I mean, P5 was still a good place to start. And with the points now, I was thinking it's it's, it's quite nice to to not start on pole and maybe overtake some drivers to gain a few extra points for for uh, overtaking people in your class which you now get scored on so i was kind of hoping that i could win race one from from p5 and score some really good points but, but yeah the uh, hopes of that lasted all of about two corners where sadly there was a incident between the first two drivers and it all just sort of stacked up behind me and it um unfortunately i got the uh, the rough end of it Oh, indeed, it was rough. And then to compound the woes as well, two safety cars over the race, curbing the amount of race time available. So not really able to build up any momentum before we went to race two. But as you mentioned only moments ago, race number two, elbows out and carving your way through with 16 places gained. Yeah, race two was a fun race. Um, it's probably one of the most enjoyable and tense races I've had in this series for, for a long time. Probably second to race three when you're trying to win the championship but um but yeah it was um this track's always going to lend itself to great racing like that with the slipstream effect but there was a couple of laps there at the end in race in race two where it was pretty much side by side about four or five rows deep um yeah it was like racing at daytona and a nascar but um everyone kept their wits about them and didn't really crash into each other and, and we all made it round um and yeah, hopefully it was a it was a cracking race to watch because it was definitely great to be a part of, and also to see Isaac get through that just before I made it my way to the pack and get a pito out of it was uh, good all round for the team. Oh, without a doubt, some major points for the team and for Isaac, and also major progress for yourself. And then race number three saw a top 18 reverse grid, which would mean that you'd be starting just outside the top 10 very quickly making your way into the top 10 and starting to battle your way through to what would be a third place spot albeit not without some primes putting up a strong fight yeah again race three was um was tough coming finding my way through the field i mean no one was really rolling over for me not that i'd expect them to but i mean it was everyone was fighting each position as hard as they could and uh, it kind of meant that by the time I made my way to the front, Jamie and um, and Nick had already built a bit of a gap that was, you know, un unbridgeable really from where I was considering I had no sign of their uh, draft coming from their cars. So I think P3 in the end was about as good as I could do in that race, getting through the, uh, the majority of the cars that were ahead of me um, and, yeah, getting through with uh, relatively few scratches on my car as well so thus to not upset anyone or cause any process so um, yeah we'll see good night all round and also well done to Joseph for getting his first win of the season in race one um, so yeah I, I think we've also moved up a little bit in the team standings to P2 as well so just need to try and get a little bit of luck on our side and maybe get a couple of wins because I haven't had a win yet this season with two races in 
Oh, indeed, and that nicely segues us over to the team's championship and the performances of your brothers today. Joseph picking up his first win in the series since season four, if my memory serves me correctly, and also Mainz are putting in some brilliant performances. You now sit 35 points off the leading team, defending champions Next Gen Pink, and we've had two rounds that have definitely been but very unique venues in the fact our season opener, a very different style of circuit compared to Monza today. I mean, we've got Sandown coming up in a week's time, another very different circuit, a very tight circuit by comparison. It seems as though the championships are wide open, would you say? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the, the first couple of rounds have definitely favoured the Audis. Um, uh, very fast circuits, Formula One style circuits with long straights and long acceleration zones. Um, so it's no surprise to see that the Audis have won pretty much all of the races. But I think coming into the next couple of rounds, what have we got? So we've got Sandown next week, uh, Aragon, Long Beach. Um, they're much more tight and technical circuits. And I think that I'm hoping anyway that um, cars like the Velosta will maybe have uh, buy a little bit of that advantage back that the Audis have had over the first couple of rounds and hopefully I can maximise on some more points but also going back to the team's championship don't forget that we had um, the Doble household uh, internet went down during race three last week at Silverstone so that didn't help us at all with the uh, the team's championship so all three of us uh, getting no points in that race so I think to be only 35 points off with that happening with three DNFs essentially in that race is not a bad start to the season. Oh, 100%. And so we shouldn't forget, like you say, race number three not going the way at all of yourself and the team at Silverstone, but definitely making progress today. And well, we talked a little bit about our upcoming around the race at Sandown. And one last question for yourself I do have to ask is, we see you back in the Veloster for this season. It does seem to be the car of that you're absolutely set on using over the course of the NXT TCC. You haven't considered perhaps switching to the Audi? Um, I've always said that there was one car I didn't want to race, and that was the Audi. Um, I've never particularly enjoyed driving it. And I think maybe because it was the only car you could use in... TCR in iRacing at the beginning maybe I got a little bit bored of it but the way it's going this season I may have to reconsider going into next season. I did actually back to back the Elantra in some pre-season testing at Silverstone in a hope that maybe I could find some life in that car and, and maybe win in, in the Elantra which I haven't done yet um, however the Veloster was still slightly quicker or suited my driving style better so the three of us will in, obviously in the Velosters this season. We'll see it out and then reevaluate at the end of the season, see where the balance of performance lies between the cars and also have a little look at the calendar because that could play a factor in uh, what car we choose for next season. We well, do appreciate the insights there, Mikey. And we'll Veloster power for the time being, at least in season six. And just before we do let you go, as always, we should ask, is there anybody you'd like to give a shout out or a thank you to live on the broadcast tonight? Uh, yes, indeed. So um, both grandparents watching from their designated sofas, wherever they are. Um, parents and uh, brothers probably watching downstairs now. Um, any other friends and family, aunties, uncles that might be still up watching. Um, and yeah, once again, thanks again for a great broadcast um, on the stream. Look forward to watching it and uh, look forward to seeing everyone next week. We look forward to seeing you out of the circuit in Australia in a week's time, Mikey. But until then, thank you for joining me in the interview. A great set of performances today. Like you said earlier, maximising the points you could get despite it all in race number one. And we look forward to plenty more as you continue your defence of your championship in round number three in a week's time. Thank you very much. Cheers. So here and there from Mikey Doble, your defending champion, the number one driver for Doble Sim Racing, and well as he continues on his journey and defend his title to try and become a four-time overall driver's champion. Really today not going his way in race number one, but talking about the fact that P5 in qualifying had the pace to be on pole given the relative practice session beforehand, but in the end taking the P5 and looking to build upon it. But the open lap instant, something which really was a domino effect with the instant occurring in front, and then just coming into the scene of the instant and 
been misfortunate in terms of how that played out. But still, it didn't perturb him and enjoyed the race in through the field in race number two to make 16 places and finish P7 up by the end of it. And in his own words, some of the finest and most intense races he's had in a long time in the XTCC, bar, of course, last season's season finale with regards to having to try and hold on and take the championship win in our finale at Donington Park Grand Prix in season five but that goes to show when his cards are down and he finds himself up against the wall well for Mikey it's not about how big the fight is in front of him in the fact he's willing to take it on head on and doing that in race number two and then again in race number three will make it his way through to the final spot of the overall podium and will alongside his teammates of both Isaac and Joseph or well, some huge points for the team move themselves up to P2 and put it in perspective with the retirement for all three of them from race number three last week to be only 35 points off the championship leaders at this time originally well it's a huge statement a huge fight back and I suspect we'll see plenty more of that in race number three round number three when we head to Sandown. But now, ladies and gentlemen, coming on to our final interviews of this evening, we're going to be hearing up from Aztec Racing's trio of drivers, and that being the combination of what is Gabriel Yilmaz, Matthew Sheridan, and James Smasesgal. And I believe we may also be having Jake Pitt join us but as they get ready to join us in the interview room. And give us a brief moment and we'll be having all four individuals join us and well we'll get to hear their perspective and what's definitely been a mixed set of results for the team today but also some podiums thrown into the mix and well they'll be absolutely pleased with that in fact no Jake Pitt today I've just been told and well they're going to be having the free drives join me very shortly but as I get ready to all jump on in and we get to hear from the perspective of Excuse me, at the free Aztec Racing Drivers, and in fact, I do believe they're going to join me now. Good evening to you, gentlemen, and well, it's great to have all three of you join me in the interview room. And well, guys, let me say firstly, it looked as though out there, Monza was always going to be one of those circuits where it's kind to some, but not as kind to others. But for Aztec Racing today, and we'll start with yourself, Matthew, it looked as though the results gradually came on through as the day went on. Yeah, I mean, as you said, it's good for some bad brothers and I think we had I think all of us had a bit of both both worlds today but yeah we find it was a topsy-turvy we, we had a pretty good quality for once actually got a good lap thanks to slipstream and the overpowered straightness straight line speed of the Audi so I was happy about that and then it all went down the drain after getting binned off into the into the first chicane Un unfortunate had a bit of bad damage as well, so I had to tow that back. So it's pretty much damage limitation there. And then, yeah, races two and three just worked my way up, avoided the crashes, keep, keep my nose clean, and then, yeah, ended up at the end of the day with a podium in my program class. So I'm very happy with that. Oh, no doubt about it. And we're looking at two, what is yourself? Excuse me, James. A similar story in a way in the fact that with regards to qualifying, P34 on the overall grid. The same as your finishing position for race number one. Race two, it just didn't go well at all. But race number three, redemption in a way. And coming all the way through to take what would be the third place spot on the AM podium. Yeah, I mean, despite the lack of practice uh, and the lack of driving in this car, I um, only decided to return to this series a couple of days ago. Um, didn't get the chance to practice, so I was quite happy with the pace. I mean, at first the pace was dreadful, um, so my quality run was a bit of a surprise when I managed to pull well up at the end, literally right at the end. Um, yeah, race one, the pace looked all right, but it wasn't great. I got hit um, early on, which is what it is. That's what sort of happens. Um, dropped back, which is unfortunate. Um, race two as well. I uh, got swiped again. But yeah, race three was good. The pace was good. I was keeping up with those around me, even though they're in a different class. Um, I managed to fight. I could see Jonathan Collins up ahead of me. Uh, was P3. I counted it through. Um, so I pushed as hard as I could to catch him. Accidentally dive-bombed him through Lesmo too. But um, yeah, it was all clean. And yeah, happy to get my over podium. A great run in race number three and gradually making you out of the order. And then for yourself, Gabriel, by contrast, a bit of a... A change tonight with qualifying being a P46 and also races one and three not quite going the way you wanted, but race number two quite close to fishing on the podium. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, the first and last race they weren't ideal, and either was Quali. Um, if a Quali, I wasn't too worried because I knew things would happen, the race would unfold, so I could make up for positions. 
Um, got into a bit of a tangle in the third race, so um, had a really good fight with Craig Tillotson. Um, that was really good fun. Um, race one was sort of just like building up steam. Um, I think on race two I did manage to get that last podium spot though. I think I might be wrong, um, but I think I managed to grab a podium. But I'll, I will go back and double check it. But um, either way, whether it was P3 or a P4, um, very happy with how I'm doing at the minute in touring cars, considering I've been, I've been at it for a year now. And normally I'm expecting last place. So to come back with a new car that all three of us are really comfortable with and all three of us to get really good positions is super great. We did. We got podiums last week. We got podiums this week. It's just really great to come back and, you know, get the season off really strong. Without a doubt, and you're correct there. It was a third place finish in the M class in at race number two. So your first podium of the season as well. And on the topic of cars, you guys have decided to go with the Audi RS3 for this season. I have to ask, and perhaps coming back full circle to yourself, Matthew, or perhaps carrying on with yourself, Gabriel, what motivated you all to go with the Audi? Because last season, we did see an interesting mix between the Audi and what was the Honda. Yeah, um, I think start of last season, we had quite a big group. There was, I think, six of us for the time being. And I think, to be fair, in terms of car choice for the team, I am pretty much the guinea pig of this i have i somehow click with the touring cars a lot better than some of the others in our team so when it comes to driving i sort of give my feedback give my opinion on what feels good what doesn't feel good and obviously yeah we had we had the honda for the start of last season and to be fair it felt good to start with but then it got to a point it, i found it extremely unenjoyable i spent more time i think fighting the car than i did fighting other drivers and obviously that was quite detrimental in terms of getting results so i was just yeah. i was just sitting there before the race one of the race rounds i was like i'm gonna give the gaudi a quick test and i was driving it and i was like this feels really good it feels like i'm driving an actual race car as i would in real life so i gave it a go and then the results kept coming i said to the others that give it a try it actually feels quite good and well clearly they well they all agreed and Clearly, it's shown with these results. Yeah, the Audi's a brilliant car. Your perspective? Oh, it's pretty much the same as Matt. Um, I, I just found like the Honda, we could never really all gel with it. I mean, I think I struggled the most with that car. I just couldn't get it to work. Didn't like it. It didn't. It like Matt said, I spent the thing I fought the most in the previous three seasons of Next Gen was the Honda. Um, got in the Audi and. I've got very limited experience racing front wheel drive in real life. I've done one or two races in front wheel drive and this is exactly this is what I expect it to be. Really direct over the front, really communicative. You know exactly whether you're understeering or oversteering. The Honda was a weird middle ground. So but I think it's not just me, all of us really love the Audi, so as long as i racing doesn't change it anytime soon, I think that will be the Aztec Racing Touring car for the foreseeable. Really appreciate the insights there on the car choice. And coming to yourself, James, more from the perspective of the races today and whatnot, with regards to the, the ongoing AM battle and in the standings, of course, making your debut today in the Championship AM class, not on the grid for what was round number one. Sounds to play a bit of catch up with the opening round being your drop score already, but looked as though you very quickly found yourself establishing your feet in amongst your peers. Yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of the AM classes, people I was used to racing uh, in Pro AM last season, so I sort of know who uh, who, who I can fight. Um, I think those who ran away with it today in the AM class, they got a good race one and then a good race two, uh, which, to be fair, meant that they could just stay out of crashes if they could. Um, and they'd also they'd get a good result from it. Um, you know, maybe as well from a good qualifying. Uh, I think we saw Mark Sykes as, as to put a name on it is they managed to get a good qualifying and a good race one. I think that sort of set them for the whole for the whole day. So they didn't have to play catch up through tonight. Um they just stayed where they were, which is a lot of points for them. Uh but yeah, no we look towards the next round. Um yeah it's not ideal that I'm a round behind but to be fair I came into round one going, I don't want to race, I don't want to race. Um and then I watched these lot race round one when it eventually happened unfortunately. Uh and when yeah, I want I want to be back in it myself. So yeah, here we are. And we're going to give it our best.
free to appreciate the fact you're on the grid and willing to give it your best even if you're around behind but there's always a drop score in effect and that can work to your advantage a bit later on and then coming back full circle to yourself Matthew racing in the prime class I mean thus far two rounds in your P6 in the championship provisionally at the moment and we're only what is 53 points of a championship leader Adam McNally provisionally you've had a strong start to the season and it looks so the only way is up from here yeah, it's been a much better start to this season than has been previous ones. I think part of that, I think I've re-evaluated sort of my expectations in terms of my pace, my position, because I had a pretty outstand. I would be, if I had to argue with myself, I had a pretty outstanding uh, debut season. I came in not knowing how to drive a touring car very well, and then. Oh, coming back after that mid-season break, end up getting four wins in class on the bat and nearly ending up, I think I ended up fourth in that championship at the end, had a chance winning it. So then following seasons, I said, you know, I've got the pace, I can keep, I can win. Clearly, however, I fell, I fell back where others gained and then that resulted in frustrating races and I think overdriving cars, getting into accidents and yeah, just not having good times but I think this season I had a complete reset of the mind and just doing my best keeping out the crashes improving pace and yeah just grabbing the points where I can and yeah it's put me sixth so far hopefully well the guys ahead I know they're all very quick I mean they've all been a bit unlucky, unlucky recently especially Alex guy's quick as hell but he keeps getting into wrecks poor, poor guy but yeah, it's round two. It's a good start. There's eight more to go. So hopefully if we keep doing this, we should have a good result by the end of it. And we'll come and see yourself, Gabriel. A very similar story as well. P3 in the AM class now. You were P4 after round number one and you're closing quickly on leaders Harley Bicknell and Mark Sykes. I mean, we've still got plenty more rounds to go, but it looks as though you're establishing some firm foundations. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm I'm really surprised with how I've started. I managed to, yeah, a podium in race one. Uh, I nearly had a, I nearly had two in race one. Nearly had two in race two, but only one in each. Either way, you just said six months ago that I'd never would have even imagined that. Even if it is in arm class, I'm happy. Uh, anything, anything that you know, any points I can get, I, I'm just happy. So. Any, anything higher than, than last is a bonus. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm really, really happy with how I'm doing at the minute. Um, able to actually fight other drivers in the championship. I'm really properly starting to enjoy it. And um, yeah, I'm just really pleased with myself on how I'm, you know, working my forward. And, you know, now I'm P3 in the AM championship. I'll try and hold it the best I can. But it is, as you've all seen, it's even in AM, the points in the field is tight. You miss a round or you have a bad result, you can get drops quite a bit. So, um, yeah, just consistent, but with as many points as I can get my hands on in each race, I think is the goal. That's well, a smart goal to have. And staying with yourself, round number three in a week's time is at Sandown, the very tight Australian circuit, which has led to some absolutely brilliant door-to-door -door racing in previous seasons. How are you feeling for it? Hmm. Well, the Audi is... A heavier, more straight line based touring car, so I feel like this might be a round where we might struggle. But then again, we said the same thing at Silverstone and we said the same thing at Monza. And I think we've come off quite well. So we'll really just have to wait and see. We can make a we can make a prediction, but we won't know until the checker flag drops on that race three how well we did. There's just really no way of knowing. Especially in touring cars as well. It's so up in the air. The the starting order be completely different to how the race has ended so you really don't know i think that's a fair assessment and look into yourself james is sand down a circuit where we can expect even more from yourself yeah i mean i, I love sand down last time we went there um was a fun track considering i'd never driven it before never even thought about driving it before um yeah it should be good racing that i mean a uh, bit scared about the amount of cars that we're going to see around there um but yes, an enjoyable track to drive as a, as a driver, so that should be good. Hopefully for some more good points. And coming to yourself, Matthew, you mentioned earlier you're the bit of the, a guinea pig for the team, so I can imagine you might be the first member of the team out there putting in the practice laps. 
yeah, I mean, if I find myself some time on top of everything else, I'll happily get on that. But yeah, I mean, Sandown, I've raced, like I say, I've raced before. It was a couple of seasons ago. I ran fairly well there. I think I got pole position in the qualifying, if I remember correctly. I mean, if I also remember correctly, it sort of dwindled from there, getting caught in a couple of wrecks. Because yeah, like the others said, it's a, it's a good track, but it's a very small one. And that's going to be a lot of cars on that grid, so... As that, in addition, was the monster curbs that track has. Um, personally, I think the Audi may struggle a little bit, but like like the others said, it's the touring cars. Anything can happen as long as you just keep your head straight and out of the wrecks. Good points should come your way. Well, we definitely look forward to seeing if the good points can come at the way of the three of you and the wider Aztec racing team. And just as we do get ready to let you guys go for the evening, is there anybody you'd like to give a shout out or a thank you to on the behalf of Aztec Racing? I'd like to give a shout out to my girlfriend, Julia, who um, told me I actually need to practice before starting a monitor tonight. Otherwise, I'd crash into someone. Um, yeah, well, we, we'll be thanks to all of our sponsors who continue to back us every round, uh, especially RSR Sports Classic. The main They're one. our sponsors, forgot about them. Yeah, the main Oops. one. <laughs> Um, yeah, as Woodland and Demon Tweaks as well uh, as the main sponsors. And then, of course, uh, everybody who runs Next Gen, all the, all the guys, you and, us, and you as well, Paul, with the great broadcast once again. Uh, coming to yourself, Matthew, any to add? Uh, I'm not sure if they are watching because they haven't messaged me, but if they are, I'll shout out my parents. They usually watch every, watch every race cheering all of us on and then usually get a phone call or a WhatsApp message afterwards about it. So if they are watching, shout out to them. If not, then I'll send them a message later about that. <laughs> Absolutely fair. Well, gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure to have the three of you join me in the interview. But congratulations on your performances today. And we look forward to plenty more in the Aztec racing journey for season six, of the NXTCC. But until then, we await you at Sandown and have a fantastic rest of your evening. Thank you. Much appreciated. Thank you, Paul. You too. See you next week. Cheers. So here and there from the Aztec Racing Trio of Matthew Sheraton, James Mazaskow and Gabriel Yilmaz giving their three unique perspectives on the racing today. And well, all of them talking about the fact that the having great performances on the board, podiums being added in there as well. And well, the points continue to come in. And we are definitely seeing a different form of Aztec racing this season in the fact that in season five, we saw what was a bit of a false peak, if you will, with regards to their performances after season four. And well, we thought they might be going on from strength to strength in season five. It wasn't to be. And I think one of the big things they've unlocked along the way to get into where they are in season six so far is the car choice by all investing in the Audi RS and feeling comfortable in that car whereas previously it was the mix of the Honda and the Audi on the grid for them in seasons four and five and perhaps the car choice is making the difference but then again as we've heard from our previous interviews and also from the Aztec racing team feeling as though the Audi's been quite strong over the first two rounds but now it's sand down in a week's time we're going to a circuit with the higher curbs the sharper curb edges are going to upset the suspension of the Audi and that may just start to put the Audi on the back foot but again we'll have to wait and see how it plays out there but with all the positives all three of them are taken from today I'm sure they're going to be looking upwards and onwards as we head to round number three and could we see some more opponents perhaps even at race wins from them well only time will tell but with that, ladies and gentlemen, we've heard from all of our interviewees this evening. We start off by hearing from Adam McNally for SRL with Next Gen Gold in the Prime Class. We then heard from defending overall drivers champion in the Pro Class Double Sim Races, Mikey Doble. And last but not least, we've just heard from the Aztec Racing Trio of Matthew Sheverton, James Mazaskow and Gabriel Yilmaz from Prime and, and, and respectively. Congratulations to all five of our interviews on their performances today at Monza. Indeed, it's been tough racing today, but they've braved it all the way through and fantastic racing has resulted from it. And a big thank you to them all for joining me in the interview room. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for us to give you an update on the provisional championships after two rounds of racing. And as we can see, the provisional standings are thus in the overall drivers' championship firstly. Wojciech Swinovic continues to lead. He refuses to be budged from the top of the standings on 269 points. He has extended his advantage slightly with Luciano Vidford moving 
moving in to P2. The world of racing driver gives chase to the Semper racing driver, but he's got to be conscious of the fact with a great score today, he's now only 14 points clear of Jamie Dory, who moves to P3, with Adam Delman and Mikey Doble completing your top five, and both on 205 points, but Delman ahead of Doble based on result count back. Doble's yet to pick up a win this season, but he's still been able to pick up a sizable gap over Benjamin McCluskey since P6, with Isaac Doble, Joseph Doble, Nick Clemens and Gavin Garner completing your top ten. And Nick Clemens being your leading prime driver there in P9 overall ahead of Gavin Garner by the best part of 12 points. Patrick Falconer had a great day today since P11 on 123 points. We look forward to plenty more from him in the races to come with Wayne Douglas P12 ahead of Kieran Sharp. And then Alex Meredith and Adam McNally complete your top 15. We then come to the prime class, and here, when the points are adjusted, we can see at the strengths of what is Adam McNally really coming on through on 257 points, with a sizable gap of what is there 38 points to Nick Clibbins, and what well, McNally right now started to carve an advantage. But we said the same about Daniel Downing after round number one. We can't really tell at the moment, given the advantage that Downing had into today, but it wasn't to go his way. And could we see another seesaw in those championship stands, and Clibbins perhaps come on through and put himself into the Lead. Or will it be Daniel Downing, who after a dismal day at Monza might be on the recovery drive at Sandown, with the fact he's dropped to P3 on 212 points, free clear of Ben Altria and Alex Meredith there. Perhaps the most misfortunate driver so far, at least in the last two seasons, you could say, in the fact bad luck has struck him time and time again when he's been in a leading position. But Meredith will be looking to once again try and find a way to convert what will be his disadvantage in P5 to an advantage by the end of round number three from 207 points. His other three points to Matthew Sheverton, who moved into sixth place, his highest position in the championship so far, and he'll be looking to continue to build that momentum. With then Swavomir Jovoski at P7, the Semper Racing driver on 200 points, and still definitely looking strong, albeit not able to show the strengths at Monza today. It seems as though it was a bit of a bogey circuit for the Semper Racing driver. And then Luke Jones, Shane Piggan, Alan McCain completing at the top 10. And from the 174 points for Alan McCain, it's eight points further down to Akram Zanun, who, after a pole position overall, making NXTCC history, it wasn't to be today with regards to results going his way. And then Matthew Addy, P12 ahead of Duncan Moraes, with Reese White and Sam Smith completing your top 15 prime standings. And then comes the AM class. In our third and final Drivers' Championship class standings, we can see Mark Sykes has now taken the lead over Harley Bicknell. With things not going the way today for Harley Bicknell, and it seems like the Monza circuit not kind to him, but meanwhile, the Audi RS3 piloted by Mark Sykes absolutely storming through to the top. And their gap now stands at what is an advantage of, well, if we do the quick mathematics, 38 points for Mark Sykes over Bicknell, but Bicknell going into tonight had a similar margin, and could we see it ebb and flow? Gary Williams takes P3, moving up from P4, only two points of Jonathan Collins. Well, Collins also have some good results today, much like Yilmaz, and it seems like we've got a slight rivalry building between the two drivers, with the Whiskey Runner racing drive being followed up by Craig Tillerson, who moves into P5 and only ahead of Mark Kemp based on result count back. From the 215 points of the pair, it's Darren Eels, further two points behind the 213. The Ace of Spades racing drive being followed up by Riley Sheringham. And then it is Kevin Smith and Daniel Fritz who completes the top 10. With Fritz not on the grid today and therefore zero points scored, we can expect him back on the grid in a week's time. Then we do have Roy Palmer, cross, cross the chats, Constantino. Reese Edwards and also Vilmos Blau, who complete your championship standings with the three points. The three drivers there having no points to their name as they've yet to compete in a round of the championship. We'll then come to the team's championship top 10, and here we can see Next Gen Ping lead the way still. The advantage has been cut to 35 points, and Double Sim Racing have leapt into P2, with Semper Racing now in P3, a further what is 101 points behind. SRL Next Gen Gold, they sit P4 ahead of VB Fusion in the world of racing. And will the fifth place team are gaining great momentum today, as have iRace Esports to move to P6 ahead of Next Gen, with JW Motorsport, the Sim Racing Collective, and Goldwing Motorsport completing your top 10 at Teams Championship standings. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for us to wrap up. Thank you very much for watching, and if you have enjoyed today's show, and perhaps you're sat there right now wanting to be on the grid for a future season of the NXTCC, or alternatively wanting to know more about our other series that are ongoing or upcoming, including our Prototype and GT3 series, and also our upcoming R Factor 2 BTCC series, well, why not check out firstly our official website, that's nextgenracer.co.uk. And as our website appears on screen, it's the home of clean and fair sim racing for all, and as we continue to host series primarily on PC currently on the iRacing platform and expand into the R Factor 
Impact 2 platform, there's never been a better time to join the next-gen racing community. Whether you're a rookie to sim racing or an esports professional, there's a place for you on the grid with us at Next Gen Racing. But if you don't necessarily want to go to our website, then also you do have alternatives available to you, and the one we'd recommend is our Facebook group. It's found at facebook.com at forward slash groups forward slash next gen racing where you can find out similar details compared to our website in terms of our ongoing and upcoming series but also a little bit more about the guys and girls behind the scenes at next gen racing that make the community what it is from our staff and admin members being very transparent on the facebook group and we'll, uh, you can find out a little bit more about what we do not just on the virtual circuit but also on the real life circuit where a number of our staff members being track marshals if not real life racing drivers we'd also like to take a moment to say a big thank you to our sponsors they do include Power Max, Next Level Racing, Mark Sykes Designs, Joyce Design, Sam Cases UK, Douglas Motorsport, and Benji at Sim Photos. And well, we need to say a big thank you to our title sponsor for this season. That's IMB Racewear. And well, with regards to IMB Racewear, the sim racing and real life racing racewear provider that prides itself on individuality with their fully custom designs, enabling you to make the impact you have always wanted on track as it is designed for you by you. Do head to their website, that's imbracewear.com, to find out more about IMB Racewear's fully customizable product range, which brings benefits you just cannot get from off the shelf products. That website again, imbracewear.com. And well, ladies and gentlemen, we now look ahead to round number three. Another three races will take place down under in Australia in a week's time. Save the date because on Tuesday, the 26th of March, 2024, we head to the home of horsepower. And well, the road surface will narrow. It's going to be tight. The curbs are high. It's a short circuit. And come the end of it all, well, there's only going to be one king of horsepower in what is the overall prime and am classes. But who is it going to be? Tune in then to find out the answer. But until then, we've been Next Gen Racing. I've been your host and commentator Paul TX141 Walsh, also known as Britain a Spit, depending on what media you follow me on. Until next time, remember to stay safe, stay well, stay smiling, but most importantly, remember to stay on track. Good night.